Hello everyone and welcome back to another Fly From Home in-depth product review with uh, me, Kitty, and... Nathan, so I'm back again for this, as promised, and we're going to do a in-depth video for you. Right, okay, so for those of you unfamiliar with our channel, um, these in-depth product reviews do tend to uh, go on for quite a long time, uh, expect a fairly long video. We tend to go into every little minute detail of the airplane and try to review it uh, in as much detail as we possibly can. So if you aren't on board for uh, an hour plus video, then uh, please uh, please make your way quietly out of the auditorium. Uh, however, if you are on board, then uh, please uh, settle down and grab yourself some popcorn. We've got some time stamps in the video description below, so please feel free to navigate to the parts of the video that you are most interested in. Now, without further ado, we're going to get on with uh, describing what we've actually got to review here today. So, you may have seen our initial first look vi uh, video for this aircraft with uh, me and Nathan where we flew this from Jersey um, to Exeter. But uh, for those of you who haven't, this is the Black Square King Air 350 with analog instrumentation. So, this is basically uh, a mod for the default King Air 350 that comes with Microsoft Flight Simulator, which involves completely replacing the glass panel avionics that come with it for traditional steam gauge instrumentations. But it comes with so much more than just that. Um, the full interior is all uh, custom. It's made from hundreds of reference different uh, photos and panoramas and technical documentation. Uh, it's got 100% native animation code for all the animations inside the cockpit. Uh, there are 4K textures being used. It's got PBR, detailed uh, mapping for leather fabric, plastic stitches, um, the new Microsoft Flight Simulator decal system for uh, quality of the labels and arrows. It's got um, in greatly enhanced instrument panel detail compared to the default aircraft. Every label and every marking is uh, in its place, and uh, don't worry, we'll be uh, making sure uh, between, well, Nathan's going to be making sure that everything uh, is where it's supposed to be. Um, custom coded steam gauges. Uh, with low pass filtering, there's um, carefully modified, com uh, modeled components, sorry, to match the depth and character of the real instrumentation. Uh, every notch, knob, switch, and button is interactable and implemented. And it's uh, full, um, full 3D cockpit lighting technology as well. The lighting there is absolutely fantastic, to be fair. Um, full PBR textures on the cockpit and panel for crisp, crisp instrumentation. Uh, there's even fingerprints on the instrument glass. Oh, everything is hideable that's normally hideable. There's uh, adjustable sun visors and all the placards and warning labels from the real aircraft are represented. And on top of all of that cosmetic stuff, there is also fully in-depth and w overhauled uh, aircraft systems. So you've got electrical systems, state saving for the panel, fully modeled uh, captain cabin environment with temperature and environmental controls, um, crew and passenger oxygen system, uh, improved engine turbine dynamics, uh, engine limit excursions, so you can break the engines, which we have done on a previous occasion. Uh, there's emergency gear extension working, um, annunciators and backlighting controls via um, electrical circuits and radio power, uh, automatically dimming screens, remote compass control, uh, fully modeled checklist, so the in-game checklist has got everything in there. We'll be using a, a, an actual real-world King Air checklist for this review, but uh, all of the in-game checklists are present and correct. So you're actually getting loads and loads and loads of stuff included with this, not just a, a nice uh, old-fashioned cockpit. Um, so without further ado, I'm just going to describe the, the structure of uh, the flight that we're going to do today. So we're going to depart out of our usual um, haunt of Doncaster Sheffield Airport in the UK. We're going to um, check out the performance of the aeroplane and check it against real-world documentation to see how closely it uh, resembles that. We're going to do a little bit of general handling that's going to improve in, involve some uh, steep turns and stalls and various other little maneuvers to just get a feel of the thing uh, and see how it handles and compare that to uh, Nathan's experience of the real aeroplane. And then we're going to do a recovery back to Nottingham Airport, which, uh, at which we're going to fly some circuits and get a feel for the aeroplane there. And then we'll kind of come to some sort of conclusion. But before we get to all of that, we've got a little bit to talk about in the hangar. So, uh, Nathan, if you'd like to kick us off with the uh, the history of the real aeroplane. So, thanks, Kitty. Yeah, my name's Nathan. You've uh, sure you've heard my mumbles and terrible voice before in previous videos with Kitty. Uh, we did the first look video on the... Uh, 350 so please go back and have a look at that video as well if you want to know some more about this aeroplane um, I am a 
Greenwood King Air Pilot, as the players will call me. Uh, I fly the uh, 200 models and 250 and 260 model of King Air, um, with the some some older scene driven ones like this is representing, and some glass panel avionic King Airs as well with auto throttles and all sort of Gucci stuff. So uh, the 350 is actually a separate type rating in the UK. Uh, it's the uh, same type rating as the Beach 1900. Uh, but the systems are fairly uh, similar. The biggest difference is just bigger engines. Uh, they are 1,050 horsepower Pratt Whitney PT6A uh, engines, and uh, they are just a bit more powerful than the 200s. But other than that, they have got two more windows in the back and two more seats generally in a, in a uh, cabin class config. And uh, I think I'm hopefully uh, worthy enough to give you a uh, an idea on this aeroplane. So the King Air was uh, as model 200 was initially conceived in as a model 101 back in 1969. Uh, the 200 was so popular that uh, Beechcraft wanted to make it better and bigger. So the three King Air 300 prototype was first um, landed in 1983, and deliveries were uh, done the following year. Um, in 1990, the Super King Airs were brought out. Uh, basically, it's had a redone of a cabin, but a quieter um, and slightly bigger uh, engines. But it's about the same horsepower, um, but they could keep a horsepower for longer and higher, which is the, the main benefit. And uh, the Super name was dropped in 1996. Now we have the King Air 350. Um, there is also uh, military versions of the 300. There's the 350ER, which is the extended range, which again is uh, often military used or for special missions uh, out in places like Australia. And uh, up to today, we're, we're now selling the King Air 360, which has uh, auto throttle and uh, digital pressurization, which is the same as the King Air 260, which I fly as well with the same little Gucci features. But a nice aeroplane. There's uh, thousands been delivered in the last uh, sort of 50 years of design. Millions and millions of flight hours, really stable aeroplane, and uh, hopefully I can give you some good insight today on this video. Yeah, it's really impressive that an aeroplane of this age has uh, is, is still a class leader in that kind of uh, respect, like you say, Nathan, um, that it's still being able to, to compete in the market with all sorts of newer aeroplanes, so very, very cool indeed. Right, yeah. so hopefully we've bored you all to death, and uh, you're ready to move on to the next segment of the, uh, the hangar. Uh, hang a chat part of the video. So the next thing we're going to have a look at is the uh, the external model. Now normally we go into great depth looking at the external model of these aeroplanes when we do the in-depth reviews. Uh, however, this is this is just a default aeroplane. So I'm sure you've all seen this if you've got Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, if you haven't, then uh, I'll give you a little spin round now. Uh, and Nathan will, uh, I'm sure, interject if there's anything on here which is in the wrong place. But uh, as far as I know, it's... Uh, it's all present and correct. Obviously, the reflections are very nice. And the oh, do you want me? I've got it's got the uh, sorry, it's got the uh, the raised bit mods. So that's actually a mod mod you put onto the King Air 350. So the uh, two straights underneath it. That's actually a mod uh, for most of the King Airs. Um, it's got the uh, the brake de ice uh, pipe down the back of the gear. Um, so around the back of the gear, you got an orange pipe, uh, which is used for brake de icing. That's a mod as well. You can have at the factory to. Basically, de icy brakes uh, for operating in places like Scandinavia and Norway, and where it's really cold and actually need the icy brakes. That's used for that. It uses bleed air from the engines, and uh, what's nice, hot air on your brakes, uh, so you can use them for taxi without uh, them freezing up. That's nice really interesting. I did, have not, on there. I did not know something like that existed. That's really cool. Um, yeah. So spinners around this side. You can see all the uh, little placards and stuff on the, the skin of the airplane, all present and correct. We've got uh, static wicks on the tips here. The lights look really, really good on these uh, on these default models. They're, uh, you can see the two bulbs in there, which was a, a very common thing with with older airplanes. You, if you look at something like the uh, the classic, are they the classic yeah, ATP series? As well. Yeah, ATP. Yeah, the yeah, um, and the ATP. Yeah. The 73200s and the 727 and all that kind of stuff, they all have kind of backup nav lights. Uh, so that's uh, an indication of the of the King Air's vintage, I guess, by looking at that. So yes, very, very nice external model, but I'm sure you've all seen that. What you'll all be interesting to see is in here. Now, as you can see, this is completely different. Uh, all of the seats and everything are, uh, are all custom made as well, although the cabin is fairly 
basic, although it does look very nice. You can see a nice bit of uh, shine on that cabin. I think this is this has had a bit of work done to it since me and Nathan uh, last had a look at this aeroplane. So it looks uh, like, yeah, sl slightly higher detail in the uh, in the cabin back there. But obviously, up here is is where you're going to be uh, spending the vast majority of your time. So uh, this is where we need to be looking at. And uh, this is really where the uh, where y where your money is being put to work in the uh, with all of the the switches here, and as I've just said in the with the description of the the product, it is everything in here is is clickable and everything in here works. So you've essentially got uh, a, a study level aeroplane hiding inside the the skin of a default aeroplane, and uh, it's all very kind of nostalgic. It's all uh, steam gauges and uh, all that good stuff. You can see here we've got the uh, the very basic instrument fit. Uh, that you can have fitted to this airplane. So this is a King KNS-80 nav system, um, very old-fashioned, basic uh, R-nav system from, I believe it's the 80s or something like that. Um, quite complicated. Uh, I did fly an airplane with one of these fitted to it once, and I barely understood it. Um, Nathan, you you know a little bit about these, don't you? Yeah. Again, I've, I've done a little bit of, uh, I suppose, Work with them. I've flown one or two of them in the past, and they are just a well, the first on a system, um, for a GA airplane, really. I believe it's all Mike correct me that in the comments below, but uh, essentially it does um, DME, DME, and VOR, VOR, uh, cross fixing uh, in the nav system. And uh, before the days of GPS, it would uh, give you a an on a capable airplane. Um, using the the three four, uh, so it's not a laser ring gyro or anything like that. It can uh, give you a, enough uh, accuracy using a, using a nav aid around uh, the UK and Europe, position yourself and fly in airways and and do uh, daft and exciting things like that. Really. Yeah. So this is a this is an interesting old thing. I mean, obviously, if we were going to give you a a full demonstration of how this works, we're going to have to do a little bit of reading up and <laughs> ourselves yeah, and work out yeah. how to, to do it properly. So we probably won't be uh, doing this today. Um, so this is the first option, uh, and we're going to walk you through the other options which you have um, with this uh, with this aeroplane when we actually get into the simulator properly. But you can see this little switch on this side uh, with all the different radio labels over here. So this tells you um, this is how you switch between the options, and you can do it uh, in flight as you're going along, which is uh, very cool. Um, so yeah, so the interior quality of the aeroplane extremely high quality, and this is uh, this is really what you're uh, what you're paying for. Um, yeah. We'll have a quick look outside because it does come with a few color schemes, which are uh, different to the uh, default Kinger. So we've got this nice blue, uh, blue and black livery here that we uh, used on the first look video. We've also got a uh, a gold, yellowy gold color, which is uh, quite nice, quite classy looking. And we have the red, which is what the uh, the default 350 comes in in, uh, in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So I'm sure this looks very familiar to most of you. Um, and we'll uh, probably pick which uh, whichever color scheme we uh, we like between us, and we'll see you back in the simulator. Right then, here we are loaded into Microsoft Flight Simulator on the ground at our usual starting point of Doncaster Sheffield Airport, and we now have a full add-on payware scenery version of uh, of Doncaster Airport. It's looking pretty great, to be honest. Definitely an upgrade from the. Uh, from the default, and it's only £11. So as far as I'm concerned, that's £11 well spent. Um, just a brief note on uh, on Doncaster Airport. It is obviously the starting point for all of our in-depth review videos, but in real life, this place is, uh, is going to be closing down at the start of next month. So we're going to keep, uh, keep Doncaster as the starting point of all our videos as a little bit of a tribute to uh, all the people who uh, worked at Doncaster over the years. It started operating in uh, about 2005, I believe. Really great little airport. It's quite sad that it's closing. So uh, we're going to keep doing it, uh, doing it tribute here in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Right. So uh, as absolutely. you can see, oh, <laughs> as I say absolutely. And if any of our viewers have got a spare few million pounds to keep Doncaster Airport open, please contact us below, and we're happy to uh, take your donations. Uh, <laughs> yes. To save the airport, but just, <laughs> just. <laughs> Jeff Bezos, please contact us below. Um, yes. As you can see also, this is something that is new for this video. We've decided to start off uh, at, in the dawn. This is a, a simulation of 6, uh, 6.50 a.m. as it is at this time of the year in the UK. So as you can see, the sun is just rising in the distance. The lighting looks absolutely phenomenal, which is the one of the fantastic things about Microsoft Flight Sim. 
And we're doing this so you can have a good look at the interior and exterior lighting of the aeroplane in a, uh, in a darker sort of environment. And you can see that all that stuff uh, is working as it should do and, and, well, how it looks in the simulator. And then obviously as we're flying along it'll get lighter and lighter and we'll progressively go into normal daytime lighting conditions. Right then, without further ado, um, obviously normally we'd have a look around the aeroplane and blah 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 and look at all the external bits, but hey, it's a default King Air, so there isn't any of that stuff, that's one of the downsides unfortunately. However, inside we've got plenty to get on with, and uh, should, we, uh, should we start to, to crack on with the, uh, with the process of firing this thing up, Nathan? Yeah, let's go for the, uh, the pre-flight challenge. So, we'd run this normal, so covers and chocks to remove. Um, obviously yep. we've got many of models obviously on this, on this particular King Air. Emergency exit unlocked. That's basically in, in the cabin. You can uh, unlock the emergency exit. I don't believe you can on this uh, model so far. Control locks would normally be fitted, so we'd remove them. Uh, and then on this sim, uh, fuel panel uh, full check. It's not something that's easily modelled on the sim, but it is actually there uh, to do. Um, oxygen control valve pull that on. So down to the left of the trim wheel is the oxygen handle. If you can pull that up, that'd be great. That pressurise the oxygen mask under the cockpit and uh, for the oxygen mask over the toilet seat, which is uh, often used for the, uh, some cabin crew or some king is. And uh, you can now check the oxygen uh, gauge and mask. So the gauge is over okay. to the right hand side of the cockpit, which is uh, be to the right of the P2 yoke. Hang on. And you can see there's an oxygen gauge down there somewhere. Uh, yes, oxygen, there, there we go. We've got a full load of that. So uh, that's full. And then the, the mass we were checking the sim. So if you go up to the mass in the roof, you should be able to press the button and check that they are working. So it's an emergency. There you go. It's got a breather there and the other side. Excellent. So that's the board models. It's a little uh, stuck. <laughs> ah. There we go. <laughs> it's still coming. Okay, fair enough. That's Thank the, you. There's a massive breather there somewhere. There we go, pass on. There, there. we uh, go. <laughs> circuit breakers uh, are all in where we should be, so there's left and right in the cabin. Yeah, here. and these are all operational in this aeroplane, so it's definitely worth checking your circuit breakers. As you can see, when, the, when they pop out, there's a uh, little red bit to draw your attention to it. So yes, all of the circuit breakers all work. They all pop out. Look at that. Fantastic. Perfect. Right. Uh, land, the, land the gear handle down. Make sure that's down. Yep, it is. Throttles and prop conditions. So basically, just at this point, I've put the uh, throttle into flight idle. Um, I put the props into uh, full find. Lovely. Uh, store warning test. So uh, it should work without the battery being on, um, but I'm not too sure if it was on this sim or not. But if you want to try, so it's on the right hand side on the uh, co pilot sub panel. Okay, and I'll, store let me warning. Shift over there. The Just, let's have a left of that. Okay. Um... Should be a store warning down there somewhere. On this panel here? Uh, yes, they should. Uh, there store warning, store test. warning test. There uh, we go. Oh. No. Okay, so let's put a battery on for this then, just in case there's not one of this rail on the sim. So okay. put the, uh, the battery on, and we'll do the rest of these with the battery on. Uh, uh, there we go. Lovely. So let's see your store warning again. Okay, let's try it again. Perfect, that works fine. Yeah, yeah. Fly, fly system. So if you want to rotate the black uh, switch I showed you earlier on the fire system. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. So, so basically you rotate that all the way around. Uh, normally I go, I go clockwise, it doesn't really matter, you go anyway. And you just basically check in the different detections and it should flash up with mass caution and warnings and fire as you're doing that. So you can see right, right fire um, is illuminated. You can see that on the, uh, on the panel. Yeah, and now over here. Now the left, and then you check in the right bottle uh, lights, and it's similar to the other side. So if you keep going all the way around as clockwise, okay. You can see the push lights coming up uh, yeah. on the extinguisher. So you check in the extinguisher lights, and keep going around until you basically finish in the, in the middle again. I, it's really hard to tell where that switch, the position of that switch, when yeah. you're uh, in that position. It's uh, it's like a black switch on a black background. It's kind of awkward. There we go. I can see it again now. There you go. Right. So yeah. So it, it goes up to there. Right. And then the, uh, okay. So that actually does norm does actually switch all the way around in, in real life. Right. Um, there you go. We're going off there. I mean, if you go to the other side, to the left and right extinguisher, you can check that they're illuminating. 
There you go. Oh. Yeah, I can see them all the way up there. It's miles away now because yeah. I moved my head. But yeah. So the off position is in the middle with the switch sort of pointing down to the bottom. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. Cool. Okay. Normally, uh, hydraulic fluid sensor. So that's the right of the landing gear. Okay. That's the model very well. So if you, if you press the uh, hydraulic fluid sensor, as you press that, you'll see the hydraulic fluid lower light is illuminated on the uh, caution panel, which yeah. is uh, very well done. This one. And released. Um, basically, the, the idea for that is on the King Air, you don't actually have a, uh, well, for pilots anyway, there's no way of them checking the hydraulic fluid in the system uh, externally with any, any sight or anything like that. So that's what that's there for, to make sure you've got hydraulic fluid in the system and to make sure the warning that is low is illuminating. Um, so it has got hydraulic uh, operated gear, uh, electrically actuated hydraulic operated gear. Um, which is very efficient. The landing gear handle light test, so to the left of where you just were, uh, Kitty, there's the landing gear handle uh, light, so that's the gear warning horn, okay. uh, and to the left of the handle, if you move the yoke out of the way, yep. There we go. Yep. should be... Ah, that is missing. So basically, there's a button around there somewhere. There we go, handle light test, to the right of the handle, just below... Oh, down. I see it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There we go. That, you've got three greens up to already illuminated because the gear is down, um, and you can test you're testing both red lights in the handle. So when the, the uh, worn illumination actually is like in a clear plastic handle, so the lights are in the handle itself, uh, which is a bit worrying to the passengers in the back because they just see a big red light illuminating the cockpit in the dark in this time of day. <laughs> right. Uh, non change panel test. So if you go to the uh, test switch on the right of the Christmas tree. Yeah. There we go. You can see they're all lit up nicely. Master caution warnings illuminated. And then down you can see the bottoms of the panel as well. You can see all the ambers, all the greens, and all the whites. Lovely. Look at that. Right. Fantastic. So, right now, we'd actually load the FMS flight plan uh, if you had an FMS system. But uh, right now, obviously, we, we've not got the nav system up and running yet. So, we'll skip that for now. I'm going to go for the before start checklist. So, uh, mass and balance. Obviously, you would not release this to. Uh, should show to our handlers, but for you guys, we can tell you what we've got the aircraft set up on. Do you want to go one through that, Kitty? Yeah, sure. So um, we have, in terms of fuel, we have the main tanks full and the auxiliary tanks empty. And we have a pilot and co-pilot to the generous 77 kilos and uh, four very uh, svelte 70 kilo passengers loaded in here. We've also got 100 kilos of cargo in the normal pass uh, cabin cargo space. Perfect. And a uh, parking brake is set. Okay. It's down the uh, bottom left of the uh, thing. See how it is set. Yep. See how it's pulled all the way out. Um, all switches off normal as required, which we're fairly happy we left them where, where they were. Uh, battery's on, and if you want to check the volts, so the, uh, if you go up to the top there, you can see the uh, volts are, uh, t there you go, so 20, 24 volts, that's good for start. Okay. Uh, passenger briefing completed. I think they're all happy to sat that around the back. Yeah. Uh, your advisory lights, you can turn them on. So if you go to the uh, co pilot sub panel, there should be a seatbelt sign uh, okay. over there somewhere. I wonder if it models the sound. Uh, Let's see. There. So, where are we? Uh, see the coffin. I think this is one of the things that we couldn't find last time. So, really? it may be that. Yeah, so it may be that not it's not here, here or... Uh, cabin master, just put that on. That's probably... Okay. We might switch somewhere. Uh, just checking the roof as well, make sure that less moved than what we on this model. Okay. Check the, uh, the roof uh, panel. It could be up there, I doubt it. No. Right. I can't see anything. No. Okay, that's fine. We'll ignore that for now. Um, cabin door and is extinguished, so if the cabin door was open, you would get a, a light to come on for that. Um, obviously, we can't actually open the door on this sim, which is one of the downsides. Uh, so it's, it's we can, we can uh, open ages. the window, though, but the... We can. Well, so, come off that, actually, yeah, um, so it opens on the inside, but it don't open on the uh, on the outside. And for some reason, I've got my lighting no. light on. That's, that's strange. Let's, uh, let's try and turn that oh, yeah, on. Yeah. It's wasting oh, a lot of battery. Off. There we go. <laughs> Get rid of those. Right. Yeah. Um, so, Atis. Copy that. Obviously, we, as are all of our videos uh, from Doncaster, we have clear, lovely weather uh, at this time of the dark, and uh, QNH is always 1013. Yeah, which we have. Seen. 
beacon and nav lights on. So you got the nav lights on, just put the beacon on. Okay. To the right side of it. There we go. And we can pop outside and have a look at what those lights look like. And again, it's just the default Microsoft Flight Simulator, but the, the lighting, um, the default Microsoft lighting is actually really, really good. You can see the uh, the two navigation lights on the wingtip there. You can see the, the red beacon flashing on the belly and the red beacon on the top of the tail there, as long as the little white one on the... Uh, on the very tip of the tail as well. In, uh, there's That's a right, weird, yeah. uh, weird fact about King Airs, isn't there? Some of the the old ones actually have a white beacon light on top of the tail, yeah, which is also. quite strange. <laughs> Even the ones, uh, brand new King Airs factory uh, at the moment are coming out with white as well. I'm right. Not sure why? Don't know whether it's a. I don't, I don't know. I see. I've seen red, I've seen, but mostly white in the UK and Europe. I've seen uh, on there. Not, not, not sure why. Yeah, a bit, bit weird that, uh, isn't it? Because it's usually a, a standard red, feature yeah. that, yeah, that you have red. Never mind. Uh, so, uh, we'll go for a start then. So, we'll start the right engine first. Okay, let's go so we'll right go engine. Listen to this thing fire up. One thing is not modelled correctly is actually it's taking the props out of feather before we've got the oil pressure. Yeah. So, uh, if you want to put it right, uh, just low idle. Yeah, there we go. That's something that's not very well. I took the, took the propellers out of feather before they were out of feather. Yeah, as soon uh, as I moved the um, the levers out of feather, the, uh, yeah, the, be... the prop immediately moves, which is obviously not how it works in real life. The props would unfeather as you started to gain uh, oil pressure oh, as the yeah, engine yeah. ran up. Absolutely. Okay, looking for it's fifty percent, isn't it, Nathan? The start can go off now, and then the uh, right generator on. Okay, that one can go off, and then we always go to the reset position for a few for a little while. That's right, yeah. And then hold it, it on for a while. Yeah, and you can see oh. the generator on the right side there. Perfect. There we go. And we'll start the left the same way. Okay. So let's go. Left engine start on. And hot starts are a possibility on this aeroplane, aren't we? So we, really, we should be monitoring the uh, the ITT as it uh, as the engine Absolutely, winds yeah. up. So I'll uh, I'll not do the the cinematic engine uh, start from the outside this time. I'll have a look at the uh, at what the gauges are doing so we don't light ourselves on fire. So put twelve percent turbine RPM. So if you want to go for the uh, left condition lever into yeah, low idle. Yeah, it's a low idle. And you can see you've got light up ITT. Uh, is temping out there about 8.50, and go over for 5 seconds. The max is uh, 10.90 for start, I believe. Right. Let's yeah, settle down nicely. We're over 50%. Yep, yeah, left start and go off. And then left generator on. seconds there and then yeah we have a load on the uh, on the left generator as well perfect uh, so now we'll go for the uh, avionics on okay avionics on uh, we go for inverters on both left and right inverters on left and right perfect uh, we'll then go for the furnace is back co on, which is on the uh, right hand side of seatbelt signs, or the imaginary seatbelt sign. So that goes to the furnace on. Yeah. You can see that fern on. Yeah. And then I'm going to go to uh, cab these cabin lights to bright, which is at the top. That's yep. the passengers in the back. Uh, and then now we'll go to bleeder valves to open, which is again the same, same, same area. Uh, just the right yeah. Of yeah, I see them. Yep. So, so all the way, all the way up to open. Uh, so one more, that's it. Both sides, and then we would put the cabin uh, onto auto, which is the uh, top right of where it says increase cabin temp. You yep. flick it one right to auto, I think it might already be there, possibly. It is, yeah. Okay, it is, that's, yeah. yeah. So that's an auto. And that'll basically run the temperature nicely uh, for the passengers now. Um, then we'll go for flaps, check and set. So just cycle the flaps up and down okay. uh, on the flat lever, and then we'll have them up for departure, so back to up for departure. The two days of flat to the approach setting and the uh, flat down setting. And normally, most uh, King of Departures are flaps up. 
There we go. Uh, Ethis, we have got on this, so on and test. Uh, Transponder flight ID you can set. Okay. Uh, the radar. Uh, turn it on now with the avionics. Stand by. We'll leave 7,000 in there because why not? Uh, okay. Roof as well, work be, and turn on the cabin lights. We can show the oh, yeah. ladies and gentlemen um, how good the lighting looks in this aeroplane. Just one thing we're already in practice with. Yeah, so we uh, we had a comment last time. Is uh, oh, are there no cabin lights? Oh, believe me, there are absolutely cabin lights. This is one of the things that's most impressive about this uh, about this model. It looks absolutely fantastic at night. Everything that's backlit is should be backlit. And in fact, one thing I don't, that that blue thing doesn't doesn't do it for me to be honest. So I'm gonna I'm gonna wind that off and then and just leave it with the backlight. There we go. That to me that looks absolutely brilliant. And it's really well modelled. That, that looks exactly like it would in a real aeroplane, and uh, really impressive that, to be honest. Yeah, very, very nice. And obviously all the dimmers up here, they all work as they should, so you can should turn the brightness up a little bit if you want. Um, all, all the individual bits have their own separate dimmers, so you've, you've got a, a huge amount of functionality with, uh, yeah. with these interior lights, so very, very Wipes impressive. Turning with, oh, the window wipers work, as it should do. Yeah, they uh, do, yeah. So uh, window wiper fans, the, uh, the window wipers do... There we go. They do work. Although I guess, oh no, they do all work on the on the exterior model as well. Look at that. They're good. Cracking. Fantastic. Right there we go. We'll uh, turn those off. Obviously, in real life, if we'd have done this, we'd be ripping the uh, the rubber off the wipers, which is uh, isn't a way to um, make yourself popular amongst the maintenance crew. But never mind. I see there is a uh, nice setting now. We'll probably put the tail floods on to make it the king look nice and bright for the passenger for the oh, people yeah. outside. Trying there to sell the there we and uh, right now, if you want to uh, show the map, and you can uh, talk people through the avionics setup and also the um, features we talked about before in the aeroplane. Oh uh, yeah, of course, yeah. So, you may. so that's the after start check complete, and I'll let you go for carrying on with that. Right. Okay. So there's various different avionics options, as we spoke about in the uh, the hangar segment. So this is obviously my personal favourite. It's the PMS uh, GTN 750 add-on which is a free one with a payware upgrade i've got the payware upgrade i think it's really really good it's got all sorts of stuff integrated in here traffic weather radar um, obviously all your navigation stuff it's got uh, navigraph charts integrated into it it's got a performance calculator for your vnav descents uh, for fuel usage for fuel performance all that kind of good stuff really really fantastic tool but for all of you who prefer uh, for example the default microsoft flight simulator garmin 530 there we go, we can have uh, this in here too. Uh, we can also have, for those of you who um, prefer old-fashioned uh, stuff, we've got the uh, 530 hit there with the traditional uh, nav and com radios at the top. Um, so that's what we've got there. I'm going to put that to the 750. Uh, we can also change around the, uh, the standby radios. So we can have a 530 on standby or we can uh, have the more traditional setup there. Uh, there is a way to get, uh, there should be a KNS 80 in here somewhere, isn't there? So, hang on, yeah, let's see. Sure. see if we can get it to come back. That's the, uh, this is the, the setup that, that I prefer. You got This is probably the most uh, realistic to how you'd have a King Air like this set up for flying in, uh, in mo modern day Europe. Um, but obviously I, I know that a lot of you are uh, masochists and huge fans of uh, knackered old uh, avionics systems that you really wouldn't want to be using in real life. Oh, there we go. That's it. So this thing is quite extensively... Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Stay there. Um, this thing is very extensively modelled. So at some point we're going to have to read up on how to use this because... Um, <laughs> Because this is, yeah, I've just managed to turn the engine off because I'm an absolute genius. We'll turn, we'll turn that on in a second. That's fine. Um, so yeah, yes, the the um, the KNS80 is uh, is really well modelled in this thing, and uh, you can use all of the different functions on here. Uh, I have no idea how to use that. I flew an aeroplane with one of these fitted once, and I kind of worked out how to use it a little bit. Um, but we're going to have to read through the manual. The manual, by the way, is absolutely humongous for this thing. So all of you fans of uh, the, the reading arts, you are more than, uh, more than catered for with this add-on. It's very, very well uh, documented. So don't worry if you're not type-rated on the King Air like uh, my colleague uh, is today. 
you are more than catered for when you're learning this uh, this aeroplane. Right, uh, yeah, I'm going to start that engine up again. Yeah, that's right. It's probably worth a video on its own as well with the KNS-80. So if you would like to see Kit do a video of the KNS-80, then smash that like button and comment below. And uh, I'll have a lot of fun watching him make oh, a mess of himself. Yeah, yeah, thanks for that one, mate. <laughs> I'll certainly be liking and commenting to that effect. <laughs> Right, so uh, that's uh, that's my uh, hilarious error uh, dealt with. So we'll go back to the setup that we had before, which uh, includes uh, the GTN 750 and the standard uh, 530 on the uh, as the backup radio is the Navincom 2, and we've also got a fully working weather radar over here. So this thing. It's no, it's no sort of super advanced item. It's just a Microsoft Flight Simulator default weather radar, but it's a fantastic thing to have. Obviously, the, what, the King Air has a weather radar in real life. Most aircraft that operates uh, up in the airways in all sorts of weather conditions really benefit from having a weather radar. Uh, one of the DA-42s that I fly at work has got one. Obviously, the Dash 8 used to have one. Uh, and you basically use it to, to steer yourself around the worst of the weather. So very, very useful tool. Now, something else that this is used for in this airplane, it's not just a weather radar. It's also your repair and systems monitoring device. So as you can see here, left and right engine are at 100% condition because this is a lovely box fresh King Air that we haven't destroyed yet. However, we can reset all of the failures. We can refill the oxygen. So that gauge we were looking at down there, when you're messing around with the masks, it actually depletes the oxygen. Uh, if you depressurize a cabin in flight, it starts to deplete, deplete the oxygen, all that good stuff. Um, so that can all be reset here. Up here, we've got all of the, the different failures. So you can set your global failure rate. So at the moment, we've got it set to no failures uh, because we're doing a nice relaxed review flight where we don't want things blowing up on us. But if we did want to uh, make things really crazy, we could turn it to 1,024 times real time, uh, and everything would blow up. But uh, obviously, we can put it down to real time. We'd get fairly realistic uh, rate of failures on the airplane, which I think is really, really impressive for something uh, the price of this as it is. Uh, let's uh, reset everything. Yes, I am sure. Um, so yes, very, very good. Um, let me just make sure we don't have any uh, any failures on there before we start uh, start with the rest of it. Right, so. Let's put the uh, weather radar back to standby, and then we'll carry on with the uh, the setup of the aeroplane. Absolutely. Uh, do you want to go through the um, nav setup now as well? Okay, do you want to go through yeah, the... yeah, let's let's have a quick look at that. So we're not going to go too crazy because obviously we don't have an IFR route or anything like that. Our first video, we did a little bit of a, a realistic IFR flight plan. Um, so that's worth watching if you want to see how to set this up properly. But we'll set the origin. There's Echo Golf, Charlie November, there's Doncaster, there we go. And Echo Golf, Brava November, Nottingham as the destination. And then obviously we can pop waypoints in there as required and all the rest of it. Um, if we wanted to pull up some charts, so uh, cannot get Navigraph data, fantastic, that's good. Um, if we put Doncaster in there, uh, we can have a look at some of the departures. So let's say we're going to fly runway 20, we're going to do the Upton 2 Alpha. There you go, there's your Upton 2 Alpha SID chart on there. Uh, you can zoom in and out and all the rest of it. So very, very useful thing here. Uh, and you can see it's, it's a little bit blurry because I've been trying out uh, NVIDIA DLSS. I don't know whether I'm going to keep it on or not. Uh, it's on at the moment in the video, um, but it does tend to, to create, if you move things around a little bit, it does tend to go a little bit blurry. So forgive me for that if it's annoying you. Um, obviously, the other displays we've got here, here's the traffic. Uh, we've got a terrain display on here. Everything's red because we're on the ground, uh, not because we're in hell. There's nothing wrong with South Yorkshire. Uh, the weather, so we've got the weather radar display on here. So this is the same display as we've got on the traditional screen down here, but it's just transmuted onto the, uh, onto the GNS over here. And um, obviously, the, uh, the, the page that you're going to use most of the time, which is your, your moving map display. And you can see uh, there's a lovely magenta line on there from here all the way over to Doncaster. Uh, and it's any uh, point you can click and drag and uh, select anything. So if you want a load of info about uh, Finningley Village, which is basically just a field with a house in it, uh, you can look it up on here. So that's that. As far as I'm concerned, that's uh, that's all there is to talk about with that. Obviously, we've got nav and com radios to set up. So I don't know, let's, let's whack a, an ILS in for the sake of uh, demonstration so we can see the uh, bearing needles flicked over onto that we've got VLOC selected and the ILS is being displayed on here 
Uh, we're getting a, a sensible signal from that. It's text identing, I think. Yeah, it is. ILS runway 20. So we don't need to ident that, but we would have to ident the, uh, the DME. So we could... Yeah, we can hear it bleeping away. Uh, I believe it's uh, India Foxtrot November Lima for the 20 uh, ILS. Don't quote me on that, though. Uh, the audio panel here is all, as you might expect, fully operational. It's it's very, very good. Um, so you can do all the, the things you would be doing on a normal flight in this aeroplane to ident all your frequencies and all the rest of it. Um, something else we can do, I guess, in terms of identing frequencies is we can pop in the, uh, the Doncaster NDB 338. Transfer that over, and we should be getting, and there we go, there's a green needle pointing at the beacon, and we can listen to an ident on that, and there we go, there's Foxtron of MB Yankee. It's really good, I to say, that panel works really well, really impressed with it, and uh, definitely looking forward to using this to fly with, do some videos with you guys, and I will just use it as a procedural trainer just before I do my uh, annual um, and six monthly emergency in the sim to be honest um, I, think it's, I think it's good enough from what I've seen so far just to have a practice doing things like NDB tracking uh, flying the aeroplane procedurally using Navigraph like we we'll do with Jefferson charts I think it's a really really good uh, trainer uh, and obviously uh, for professional pilots who fly King Airs or sort of type similar and for you guys who just love the King Air and uh, want to fly something like that absolutely right okay what are we doing uh, what are we doing next so just, uh, after, just more of an after start flow then, uh, which is the altitude selector window. So I'll probably start there and then move backwards. So uh, what I want to level off at, uh, say 5,000 feet normally. 5, 000, I think been, yeah. And then if you work down through the, uh, down to the left of the yoke, is the auto feather. I've got it to arm now. Okay, uh, auto feather, yep, to arm, yep. Arm. And then if you want to go down the center console, zoom right in there you want to put the uh, rudder boost on it's really important for helping you with single engine failures electric trim on we'll set the cabin uh, pressure now with that today we're not going to go very high today so we'll probably set that uh, roughly about a thousand feet above the elevation of Doncaster which I can't remember what it is uh, Kitty don't remember what it is 50 uh, feet 50 feet 50 feet yeah I remember that because I'm incredibly <laughs> sad just set that about a thousand then, and that'll be fine just for what we're doing today. And it's that's outer scale, is it? Yes, outer scale, yeah. There we go, okay. Perfect. Uh, and then, other than that, just uh, make sure your uh, TCAS is on. So, down that down the panel with TCAS should be, should be on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. On here. <laughs> On there, which that's where it normally would be on this on this older older style King Air anyway. So TCAS would be. Uh, copy, copy voice recorder. There we go. Erase, yeah. erase. Every time you swear, yeah. you have to hit that button. Definitely. We ought to have a uh, a bit of st sticking plaster basically just over that the whole time. <laughs> um, okay, so that's not there. That's not a problem. And then so uh, run up. TCAS, I'm I'm guessing is going to be part is is part of the 750 on uh, on here. So we, we do have a TCAS. It does work, but it's uh, it's all integrated into this radio over here. Very good. And that is AC. We are ready to taxi when you are. Okay. Right. So let's pop the taxi light on to tell the world that we are about to start moving the aeroplane. Uh, yeah. Bring bring the yoke back. I'm gonna have a quick wiggle of my pedals. If anyone wants to donate me some good rudder pedals, I am uh, more than open to that because I definitely need some. But uh, hey ho, right? Squeeze the brakes, release the parking brake, and uh, very little power required to get this thing rolling, uh, isn't it, Nathan? It's uh, very, okay. very sensitive. You don't ever really leave it while you're taxiing uh, in flight idle because uh, left on the straight, you will probably taxi about 30 knots. Um, so. Most of the time, you'd be uh, not even too much braking to be honest. Just uh, go into ground idle and just taxing it on a really annoying, loud noise in ground idle. Uh, but it keeps the uh, it keeps you from wearing out the brakes. Absolutely, and obviously because we're not a uh, a certain Irish airline, we don't taxi too fast. No, about twenty knots would be the fastest really. So in the uh, real world at this point, we'll be actually be running through before takeoffs on the roll in a multi-crew environment. I don't expect Kitty to do this uh, while he's trying to taxi in the sim. So we'll treat it more of a single pilot event today. So we'll go to the whole point and we'll run the before takeoff checklist uh, at the whole point, uh, just because obviously 
Uh, we don't want him looking in places he can't see while we're taxing around. Absolutely. Obviously, my brain is far too tiny to uh, do more than one thing in this aeroplane, so uh, that's a sensible decision. Let's have a look outside. Look at that. There we go. Lovely, shiny aeroplane. Yeah, it's really good. Where's the fuel bay? Have they modelled the fuel bay? <gasps> no, they haven't. There's no pumps. I want a refund. No. I think the model of his airport is pretty good, to be honest, with the family. I think, yeah, I think it's excellent. You can tell that there's a lot more effort that's gone into making the terminal look right than there is making the uh, the Avgas fuel bay look right. But for, yeah. the, for the most part, it is uh, very accurate as somebody who is reasonably familiar with this airport in real life. You can hear that creaky, creaky noise, which uh, seems to follow all of the default uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator airplanes around. I think the, the interior sounds are custom, but the exterior sounds are the default ones, so don't expect anything too, uh, too dramatic. But they are good. I mean, there's, there's nothing wrong with the, uh, with the default sounds, I don't think. They are very uh, reminiscent of the real airplane. Yeah. Right, here we are at the holding point. Right, ready when you are, sir. Okay, so I saw my taxi, obviously put the tail lights, taxi lights on, the braking stone ejects, the instruments I was looking at while he was uh, doing returns. Uh, just for instruments as well, just, uh, if you want to set the heading bug along the... Uh, yeah, along absolutely. The so, oh, this is a uh, course, so let's put uh, runway heading in here. We're going to use runway 20, the course for that is 198. Uh, that's heading bug. Give me two years to swing and get round. Normally I would, uh, I would do this on my Honeycomb Bravo yoke. Um, because it's a bit quicker, but I know people don't don't like it when I do honeycomb things. So here we go. You get the full experience of uh, spinning the heading bug all the way. There we go. Look at that. Lovely. Very so, immersive. Then, and just for now, I'd probably set on the autopilot down the bottom, just uh, heading mode uh, on there. Yeah. And I'd probably set the uh, press the go around button as well. Hit the uh, go around button. Okay. Obviously, on the uh, side of the throttle. Yep, so uh, it's over here. So you can actually click this in the cockpit, but I'm going to press my honeycomb button because I, I like it. There we go. And you can see the flight director starting to pitch up to, was it eight degrees, Nathan, for the yeah, that departure? Yeah, degrees, yeah. That's right. Um, so that's normally what we depart on, to be honest. I mean, once we're, uh, once we're climbing away, we're going to select some more modes as we uh, climb away. So that's uh, looking good. And. Uh, we're for four takeoff, so friction set. So there's four frictions uh, to do on the throttles, one for each. Uh, sorry, is it actually six? Um, no, sorry, no, I, I'm, I'm completely lying. There is four. I was right, right first time. So it's <laughs> one under each throttle, okay. which you get we're hidden by the throttle right now, a friction lock, and make sure Excellent. they are tight. Uh, one um, for the both props. So yeah, just, uh, there we go. There. And then one for the uh, for the fuel cutoff levers. There we Which go. All... So a common problem with the King here is that you've actually got springs that uh, actually push the throttle back to idle. I think we mentioned this in the previous video. So make sure your frictions are locked. Um, to make sure those throttles don't come back. There's nasty accidents because of that. So electric trim test to make sure that the trim switches work and the trims okay. uh, go up and down. There we go. Yep, looks good. Uh, Trim tab set, so 1, 2, and 3, 0. So 0 on the elevator, 0 on the uh, aileron, and 0 on the rudder. There we go. So 3 zeros all set. Uh, flaps are up for departure. Oxygen is on, and we had pressure. We checked that earlier. Autopilot flight data modes. We've got heading um, unshaded, and the uh, go around is, is pushed. Altimeters are set for 5,000 feet, and we've got 1013 in the uh, set for the Q&H. Uh, out select, set 5,000 feet as discussed. Crew brief, we're going to depart Doncaster, go to 5,000 feet. Watch Kitty make a mess of it as normal, and uh, yep. continue the flight. Fantastic. Um, so, start items. So, would you like to model some of the features, see if it works or not? Oh, let's audio. give it a go. So, auto feather. So, we go to the auto feather switch and we'll put it down into, hold down into the test position. And if you put the power levers up now to around about, uh, well, it's just percentage of talk, so we'll see where we get. But it's basically until the auto feather switches on, which you'll see come up on the lower uh, display. Am I going to see it? Am I missing it? 
weighs a little bit, but about 90% of energy. Keep going, see if it works. Keep going. No, it's not going to model that, so the auto doesn't work, isn't, isn't modeled. So I highly doubt then that the prop governors and rudder booster modeled as well. So we'll, uh, for now we'll leave them leave them as they are. So that's a bit of a shame. Um, eye systems. If you want to put the prop DIs on, to uh, that is on the. You see where it says prop in ice protection. Uh, well, prop uh, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah got it. Well, okay. Put the prop on. Yep. And you can see you get a prop arm, so that is working on the right side, so that's really good. Uh, and then with the boots, if you want to press the boots to single cycle, so it's a surface DI single, if you flick that up. Yeah. And you can see that ah, it's activating this, that's good. And then if you have a look over towards the vacuum pressure on the right hand side of the cockpit, you might see a flick of the surface pressure. Uh, so one actually, uh, there you go, so an acid pressure, there's no flicks there, that's not quite modelled right, but it is in the green, so we can let them off for that. So there's a few things that are not quite modelled, but um, I don't think, I think they're very anal retentive to be fair. Uh, Sadly, we don't get any animated boots either, do we? That's uh, one of the things no. that I really like to, to see on aeroplanes, but unfortunately we don't get those. But, you know, like, like we said before, it's a uh, it's a default external model, so you shouldn't expect miracles from uh, from the outside. Okay, so uh, generator loads, uh, we'll check them, they're good. Ice veins are open, so if you go to the ice veins and zoom in there. Uh, so you want anti-ice on, most departures. So we should have done a lot of attacks actually. So engine anti-ice, if you look um, to the left of the yoke, engine anti-ice. Engine anti-ice, uh, anti okay, so we want those on, yeah. yeah. So that's basically the uh, small uh, flap inside the, the cowling. Uh, and they'll allow any FOD to go out, basically, uh, or ice. That's that's what they're for. Uh, you do get a reduction of power, but with these temperatures below 15 degrees, it's not a non issue. Um, ice veins are open. T's and B's are in the green. Fuel check. So we should have full mains, which you can see indicated on the left on the gauges. And we should have zero in auxiliary. So if you uh, flick the uh, select switch on the fuel panel to auxiliary and press it down. Okay. If you hold it, that should point to zero, which it is, so that's good. So that's um, doing well. Let's the switch. And you can see it uh, burns a little bit in the taxi fuel, so we burn probably 50 pounds, which is about right. Awesome. Uh, control full and three. Okay, so let's do full and three check, bring the yokes back. So full left, full right, full forward, full back, full left pedal, full right pedal. That's full and three checks. Perfect. And it's modelling that very well because the yoke does normally sit um, on the ground anyway, full forward. So that's modelling that quite nicely. Um, props full forward. Yep, check full forward. Another shady panel check, make sure there's nothing on the shady that we're uh, too concerned about, which we're not. Uh, that's good to me. Uh, Seats and harnesses are secure. Yep, I'm fully strapped into my chair at home. Uh, auto feather back to arm, which you yeah. so I can see it is from here. Yep, it is. And then we'll do a line-up checks here just because, again, I don't want you to do it. We normally do these on the taxi and the roll to line up, but because obviously uh, I want to make it easy for yourself. Um, alternation to arm, so above the anti so just those both to arm. Yeah. Landing lights on. Yep. Yeah. Uh, strobe recogs on. So you've got recogs and strobe. Yep. Windshield heat to normal. This is basically once your heat to uh, to the top, is it? You would only put it in the high if you've got really heavy icing, which is one down. So basically, just more power for the windshield heat. Ice systems uh, as required, so there's no icing outside, so we don't need prop or anything like that. On, so we're, we're quite happy. Um, hops, so that is the two fuel vents, and then store warning and both pitos. So we call it uh, hot fives on. There you go. All of those. There. there we go. Uh, transponder C gas uh, set. Okay, um, so transponder goes altitude reporting. And um, once we're clear for takeoff, taxi light off. And let's assume we're taxi uh, light off, so we're clear for takeoff. Right, let's go for it. And there we are. Next is after takeoff checks. No pressure. Don't say that. Look at that, we've got, a, we've got a lovely sunshine. Maybe the viewers will be distracted by the, the beautiful sunrise <laughs> in the distance and they won't notice my horrible flying. Uh, the speeds are in the uh, the manual uh, for this, for, for viewers watching this, so uh, they are page 12, and looking for rotation speeds of 105 knots. 
I'm at a V1 of around about 95, um, but we're not using a V1 today. Doncaster's nice and long enough. Yep, almost three kilometres, isn't that? Okay, let's start ramping the power up. Yep, all the way up to 100%. Um, if you it's around about 90, 95%, it should increase as the uh, airspeed uh, increases. You can see the auto feathers are on, which is good, it's exactly how it should be. Positive rate, get go away. Touch the brakes, gear up. I like the noise of the gear going up, it's really good as well. That's, that's well modelled, that electric sound you can hear. Yeah. It's very good. And we'll climb, uh, we're looking to climb. Now we're away from uh, most of the obstacles. We'll climb at 160 knots. Okay. Um, and then you can put IS mode on at 160. And uh, put a gauge water pipe when you're ready. IS. And. Horse pilots. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Right, I'm going to make sure the uh, yaw damper's on. There we go. Okay. So actually, that's, that's the not one one, because when you press the autopilot in the King it should put the yaw damper on as well. Right. Quite, uh, but it's still, still good. Uh, it's not going to uh, uh, cry about too much. We're climbing away from the ground. So now. I'm probably bringing the props back, so if you zoom into that prop RPM, I can't quite see it on my screen very well. I'm probably bringing it back about 100 RPM um, on the props. Okay, keeping a close eye on the torque, because obviously as, redu as you reduce RPM, the torque increases. Yeah, you've still got um, another 10% of the going to torque to 100% if you, if you wish. And looking at our climb rate, that's, that's showing about 2,700 feet, which is exactly what we're looking for, uh, for the performance figures released by the, uh, the manufacturer, so that's uh, looking very good at the moment. Yep, so that's looking good for our uh, performance check for the climb rate. Very nice. A thousand to go. Uh, you see the autopilot's leveling the aircraft off now. Uh, I should hold it at 5,000 feet. Uh, yeah, just don't have to take off checks. Let's go for it. So, gear landing lights, or, or, and uh, landing lights are right now, because the landing lights are on the gears, so there's no point having them on the gears up. Yep. Uh, flaps are up, climb power yep. uh, you've set, uh, your damp is on, ice systems as a guy, so there's no ice in now, so I've turned the anti-ice off. With that, you should get a torque rise, so just be mindful of that. Yeah, so they are going up. Power. We're going to bring that power back to below 100%. Uh, prop sync uh, should be on, and you can see that actually the prop sync gauge is modelled on this aeroplane. So if you have a look at the little spin in the prop wheel behind the yoke, there you go. Prop sync gone, and you can see about where the stationary prop sync is, is what's already sync working. When we get the power back, that's perfect. And pressurisation, um, this is not a normal check the pressurisation, but because obviously we aren't really climbing, uh, the cabbage is already levelled off, so the pressurisation gauge is behind the throttles. Uh, oh, yep, of course, yep, cabin climb. There we go. Cabin climb and it's levelled off. Um, it's nothing to really do on this flight. And if someone wants more of a detailed video of an impression system, then I'm happy to try and go for it with people. Um, climb checks. So, uh, because we are below 10,000 feet, we'll leave the records on for visibility. Impression is set, altimeter is set, anti ice is off, and cabin stars have got passengers if you're you happy to release them. Again, okay. Fine. The mystery cabin sign, so uh, I'll also ignore that for now. Uh, cruise checks, go straight to that now. So, props, we can bring back to, I think it's about 1700, I think, so another 100 RPM. Okay, bring those back very, very carefully. There we go, keeping a close eye on the torque. That was just a noise for the passengers, really. Yep. To make a big uh, power, as required, so the full uh, maximum go now, we'll bring the power back if it's up to you. Um, Auto feather can now go off. Now we're in the now we're in the cruise. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. 
So you wouldn't have an amber light on your cover off in this section of the, of the crew. It's not really an issue. Right. Not, not difficult. I'll just put it back on just so that, that the yellow, yellow light will annoy me. Uh, that's because it's not perfect well bottom. Army sem check. Um, that applied. Engine monitoring and fuel. Basically, check checking we've got no fuel to get to the destination, which, seeing as Nottingham isn't far away, and we're doing 240 knots, I think we'll be fine. Yeah, I'm just going to turn us uh, turn us east because we're already on top of Nottingham. So we <laughs> last time with the uh, with the four and four, we were finding ourselves shooting miles past Nottingham, and uh, even more so this time. I think this is the fastest uh, fastest review flight trip to Nottingham we've ever done. But obviously, this so. is <laughs> quite easily the fastest plane we've ever done a uh, an in depth review on. So that's understandable. Right. Yeah, so as far as I yep. set the, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, Kitty. I probably set a fuel flow around about three hundred pounds um, of fuel okay. per hour. Bring those back. Uh, and actually, give us a clean. That's a bit. That's, back, but, but that's a bit much. Fair. Yeah. So about uh, fuel I think we may have had a double engine failure. That's fantastic. So as soon as I, d I moved the uh, the levers, they immediately just died. Okay. Oh, and also the um, condition was going to high idle for some reason. That Yeah, because I, I I just jammed them forward out of panic. <laughs> oh, so, there we go. Managed to. So yeah, strange. Th this is. I I can't move the um, the condition levers any out of the the gates there, so I can't adjust the fuel flow at all. No, we don't need to know. The fuel flow, just remember, the fuel flow is on the... Oh, of course. I'm thinking I'm flying a bloody piston. Right, okay. Yeah, it's just me being stupid. There we go. 300, yeah, yeah. 300 pounds. <laughs> you've, you've got to speak very slowly for me, Nathan. Sorry, sorry. I apologise. There we go. I've managed to give us a double engine failure. But we've, we've, recovered, we've recovered it. It's going great. We're doing great. So, for the for turbine fires out there, remember... Fuel flow is set by throttle. So in any jet engine airplane, uh, the more fuel we put in, the more power we get out of it. So fuel and flow does become a bit of an issue when you start flying turbine airplanes. So uh, that's not quite Kitty's fault. It's more my fault for not explaining because um, I forgot. And, there we are. and also the only, the only turbine airplane that I have any kind of experience with do doesn't have those. It just has props and throttles, and everything else yeah. is controlled by a, a little computer brain. So. I am I am very dumb when it comes to turbo props. <laughs> <laughs> so that that is slowing down nicely now. So now we're at uh, so again just bring the uh, power back a little bit. Uh, set that three hundred pounds aside. Yeah. And we yeah. should get around about between one eighteen to one knots clean. Which is quite a nice uh, speed to be at for uh, around like this. Yeah, it's looking pretty comfortable. Right. Okay. Cool. So um, I guess we better do some general handling. So uh, we'll start off with. Um, We'll do a couple of steep turns. So, do you reckon this airspeed is okay to do a to do a steep turn out? Yeah, fine. Yeah, crack on. All right. So, I'm going to pop the autopilot out. Got a oh, very very melodic little horn there. There we go. So, the airplane uh, handles is quite it's reasonably light on the controls. It's quite heavy on the ground when you pull it off the runway, but uh, in flight, feels quite nice and light. It does feel like there's a bit of weight to it. It's not maybe maybe not quite as as good with the inertia as uh, like the four and four is. But the, the flight model has been tweaked around to uh, to help with the um, the realism and the and also the performance, make it match the book figures uh, more accurately. So there's definitely been some work that's gone on here. Uh, so let's uh, we'll have a good look out in the interest of uh, our virtual uh, reality safety, and then we're going to go into a steep turn. So I'm just going to take it over to 45 we'll, degrees uh, angle bank. Yeah, and also just just for us, no, we'll, we'll demonstrate it on this one anyway. Normally, if you take the, auto, the autopilot out, you would leave with your damn pin on this aeroplane. It's just quite a waggy aeroplane, so it might see us in this demonstration here. Um, so flying with your damn pin definitely preferred, just for passive comfort and your own comfort, really. Um, you can't feel as much of the carpet, but in the back, without your damn pin, you are popping in, wagging around like a, a big old Labrador. Uh, it's got a <laughs> lot of so your damn pin is definitely useful. So actually, yeah, so this is this is quite easy. I don't need a, an awful amount of back pressure. It's quite light in terms of pitch, uh, which is quite pleasant. It's very easy to hold the aeroplane. Yeah, yeah. 
yeah, look at that, lovely. The other advantage of flying in the in the morning is that the uh, the old Microsoft Flight Simulator um, thermals haven't built up yet, so <laughs> it's not quite as bumpy as it uh, was when we were testing the form for. There we no. go, lovely. So very nice and smooth in the steep turn. Very pleasant aeroplane to fly, and uh, I'm I'm hoping that's some somewhat uh, familiar to you, Nathan, with the real aeroplane. Yeah, yeah, it's just beautiful. Really nice to fly, hand fly, or it's that, like I've talked about in the previous video. It's basically a a baby airliner, so you can fly it just like an airliner, all the right systems, um, or you can fly it like a P28, and it's really nice on the control. It's actually nicer to fly the P28. Nicely weighted, not too heavy, but again, doesn't feel like you. You feel like you're flying something quite heavy and beefy. Um, it's very nice, stable, stable, and feels safe as well for for pilots and passengers. It's nice, nice place to be. Absolutely right. So steep turns, uh, mission accomplished. I think. So, right, we, we've got a bad record with this, but should we try a stall? Yeah, why not? Yeah, T tail airplane stall. What can go wrong? Yeah, exactly. Only five thousand feet to recover. Yeah, should be fine. Oh. Right. So the setup for this: Are we going props full forward, throttles all the way back to idle, obviously, but props full forward, ready for the recovery? Uh, there's not much power in, in this thing. For, for this, I'd probably just think props will be asked, honest. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, yes, you would in a, in a real life, in a real life sort of stall condition, but you wouldn't ever stall a king here in real life. You do it in a simulator, um, really, if you, if you can help it. Yes, there is tight racing out when you do it in a real airplane, but nowadays things are moving more towards a sim. So for this, we'll just bring the throttle back and uh, see how she handles. All right, let's go for it. There's the gear warning horn, beeping away. So you can see the aeroplane quite efficient. It's taken quite a long time to slow down. Yeah, it's quite, it's quite, it's sort of slipping, isn't it? It's, to be honest, um, once you're around about this speed, those propellers, even at this RPM, would disc quite a lot. So you will be slow, slowing down a lot more at this sort of speed now. Um, just a bit more and more. Uh, being the props forward, even makes a difference. I wonder if there's not a bit based on the props being forward. Uh, maybe a little bit more. I'm having to put quite a lot uh, of nose up trim in now. Yeah, nose up trim is correct, but I'd say you'd probably slow down quicker than that now. Yeah. Those prop, once they start to disc, they've got quite a bit of bite in, in the air, so uh, basically disking, as I explained to people, it's basically like a, a zero pitch on, on the on the propellers. It's like having two big um, air brakes out on the wings that just slow down quite aggressively uh, once you have the uh, throttle all the way back. So we've got a stall warner, but we've got no actual signs of a uh, of a stall just yet, apart from that. Oh, yeah. Okay, now I have full back pressure now, and we have a rate of descent. So that's an indication that the aeroplane has stalled. Uh, we've got a high and unrecoverable rate of descent. And you can see the nose is just starting to nod down towards the horizon just a little bit. And it'll nod down until it picks up a little bit more airspeed, and then as you can see the rate of descent is backing off again uh, as the aircraft gains a bit more energy and goes back into a stall. So it's basically we're just holding it into a sort of very stable mushing stall at the moment, which is uh, hopefully how the real one does it. It's uh, a bit of both of them. It's one of, a bit like a Cessna we talked about. It can do a nice total stall. It can be quite violent. Um, if, you, if you do stall it like you have in a nice, clean, sort of stable condition, it will stall quite nicely. Uh, it's one of those things, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, I've thought about previously. Well, I'm going to shut that up and just commit to a standard stall recovery. So I'm going to lower the nose to unstall the aircraft and then add power in. Be careful not to go over 100% because I don't want to burn the engines up. There we go. And then uh, just go back into uh, into a sensible climb. Lots and lots of nose up trim required uh, for that one, Nathan. I was having to trim for a very long time to get it yeah, to... Uh, uh, right. It is, yeah, that's uh, absolutely right. It's quite a nose heavy aeroplane, I suppose, at a low speed. And again, yeah. when you are doing that final phase of flight, the landing later into the Nottingham, you'll find that you, as you bring the power back and you are flowing, you kind of flow a little bit with the trim wheel. Uh, it is quite a heavy pitch um, at those low speeds. 
Right, we're back at 5,000 feet. So I'd, I'd say the stall is is uh, realistically benign for the most part. Uh, like Nathan said, yeah. maybe if you abuse it a little bit. In fact, should we should we try a, a stall with flaps and a bit of power on or something and see what happens with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, OK, give us 10 minutes to slow back down again. So you can go for the uh, approach flight now. You're below 200 knots. OK. OK, quite a big balloon from that. Yeah, uh, you won't get much of a balloon, to be honest, so that's not one more. Well, gear down. Uh, gear down, there we go. The flaps on the King Air aren't very well lifted, like they're more drag. Yeah. Quite simple, not a power flap, but it's very simple. Uh, flap, sorry. Uh, so they're more drag than anything else. Are you going to go full flap now? Okay, full flap. Uh, RVS not ready, apparently. Yeah, that's because the props are back, so it's reverse not ready. Ah, uh, so yeah. Props on. So, not, so if you landed right now, you still get a uh, prop reverse. We won't get a full reverse made up. That's what it's going to be. That props are available. That's gone off. Right. So I'm going to add a, a little bit of power here. We're going to do a little bit of a power on stall. See, uh, and I'm going to be a little bit more aggressive with the uh, with the nose. I'm going to try and sort of drag it into the stall this time instead of just allowing it to very gently. I'm really tempting fate here, aren't I? Let's 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 see what happens. Oh, okay, yeah, there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. So yeah, we drop like it. <laughs> Before we have we another did spin. Die today. We did die today, so that's very good. There we go. Right, fantastic. So we have proved that uh, that there, Nathan. We've got uh, the aeroplane. If you if you treat it nicely and you you stall very gently within a clean config with the power off, it's very very benign. But if you yep. stall in a dirty configuration with a power on, and you drag it in and you abuse it, then uh, it abuses you back. So uh, that's, as far as I'm concerned, that's that's pretty damn good. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, happy with that. Right, let's try and reset our uh, config that we had before. Get back up to five thousand feet. Is there anything else do you think uh, is worth testing while we're out here? Uh, I can't think of what I did on the previous video. Sorry, uh, Kissy. Um, no, I think that's sort of our normal, to be honest. Yeah, that, uh, that, that's the usual show. set. I think what we, um, what I usually do is a, is a little bit of a, a thing that I usually demo to students on, on well, way back when, when I used to teach PPL. I don't think I've done a PPL lesson in, in, in years and years now. But what I used to do to demonstrate to people how aerodynamics and aeroplanes work is what you can do is, is roll an aeroplane into, uh, into an angler bank and just let go of the yoke. And slowly, slowly, you see that the aeroplane will naturally start to yaw. I mean, this is... I'm going get to rid get rid of the yaw damper so we can actually see this in full effect. Uh, and the angle of bank will slowly increase, and you'll get a steadily increasing rate of descent. And that's called a spiral descent. Uh, and as we, we kind of bring the airplane uh, back away from VNE and regain our altitude, if we do the same thing just with rudder input, so let's go back up to 5,000 feet and do a, a similar sort of thing. Yep. So this is just testing that sort of the basic aerodynamics of the aircraft are, are working as they should do, which, uh, to be fair to Microsoft Flight Simulator, and it, they, they never have done anything but, also, really. The, the reflection on the left as well, the reflection and the, the window on the left, that's really good. That's uh, excellent. Yeah, the yeah. instrument panel in there. I mean, th this is obviously uh, nostalgia for you, Nathan, and, and completely uh, <laughs> lost on me as someone who's, who's never been in one of the... Well, I, I have been in one of these things, I tell a lie, but... There yeah. we go. You can see that this is just rudder pressure, by the way. There's no yoke input at all. You can see my yoke's in the middle. And uh, the yaw is forcing the aeroplane into a roll. So the secondary effect of uh, yaw is roll caused by uh, the uh, accelerating the outside wing, making it produce more lift. And therefore, you get uh, you get a yaw out of it. So that's absolutely realistic. That's a, what I'd expect from uh, from abusing the aeroplane in that manner if we were doing it in the in the real one. So there we yeah. go. That's that's all I've got uh, in terms of, of tests. I think for the most part, that's uh, that's very handy. Given that the aeroplanes only had fairly limited amounts of uh, of tweaking on the aerodynamics side of things and the flight model side of things, uh, it does seem to be handling really quite nicely. It is and it is a nice aeroplane to fly. It's you can feel 
certainly in roll, you can feel there's a bit of inertia there. It's, it's maybe a little bit too sensitive in pitch, in my opinion. But again, I've never flown a real King Airless, so th this this might be perfect. But um, comparing it to what I what I kind of consider as the gold standard of flight models, which is the the Cessna 414. Um, it just has a little bit less of that that really nice inertia that the Form 4 has. But anyway, let's uh, let's let something competent take over the flying of the airplane again. So let's uh, let's go autopilot on. Um, completely forgot to set my heading bug before I did that because I'm a rubbish pilot. So let's reset heading bug and check the annotator panel. We've got flight director heading uh, alt and autopilot master on there. So uh, is the Yordam back in now, sorry, is the Yordam back in now? Yeah, the Yordam's back in, I've, uh, I've whacked that back in. Uh, although it, it should so. be, should it be on there? I don't yeah. know. Right. It should actually be, should actually be up there as well, so the light should actually be on the, uh, just about there. Yeah, we got YD there, yeah. so that should be on there, so that's a, a little little bug, that should be, uh, that should be showing up on there as well. Right, okay, yeah. so let's have a, a quick look at the, the sort of navigational and en route features of the aeroplane, I guess. Um, I mean, we're doing... Quite happy with this speed at the moment. I think Nathan about two, two ten, two twenty, something like that. Yeah, so I'm, I'm yeah. happy to keep us cruising along at this sort of speed. Um, so we already put Nottingham in as a destination. So what we can do with the uh, the good old 750s, we can pop in a direct two, and we can go to Finningley Village. No, we don't want to go there. So we hit flight plan. You can see Nottingham is on there, ready to go. If we had a full flight plan in here, all of your flight plan waypoints would be up. So if you are flying on Vatsim and you got a direct two from ATC, and he said route direct to, I don't know, Pole Hill or whatever. You can just select Pole Hill on here and press activate, and it would give you the magenta line direct to uh, where you want to go. So as you can see, it's quite different from where we're heading at the moment. So I'm going to swing the heading uh, bug around and put it into uh, the rough direction of that, uh, that routing. I'm also going to hit the CDI button, and it's going to put us into GPS mode on the, uh, on the CDI here. So if we align the uh, course deviation indicator with the desired track, which is 225. So I'm going to do this on the honeycomb, but you've already seen what it's like to, to do it manually. Uh, so 225, you can see down the bottom right corner, the course comes up on that little uh, little uh, number ticker thing down at the bottom right, which is very handy. Yeah, just a, just a question for yourself, Kitty. Um, can you set visual approaches on the Garmin uh, on the PRS 750? Good question. Let's have a look. Um, so, yeah, we would fly this like you would fly a, a visual approach in, into some, an airplane like this. Uh, you can do a manually flying visual approach, but just for the viewers out there, we'll do one. A lot of operators would do one, which basically keep a keep, get the airplane flying a visual approach, and that will help get it out of this line. Uh, and we can configure it and basically do a visual approach through the GPS, uh, and that allows you to have your eyes out in a busy circuit like Nottingham and uh, see if that is possible. As far as I can tell, it's not, because we don't have any approaches listed here for uh, for Nottingham. Um, what, give you a, like a pseudo visual approach tool? Uh, mm, no, it doesn't look like there's, uh, yeah, th there's nothing on here, so. Unfortunately not. OBS into Nottingham? Yes, we can do that, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, let's go back to there, let's go um, OBS and we can whack it on runway heading can't we so we can stick runway 27 on there i have yeah. no idea what the actual um mag, mag heading of runway 27 at uh, nottingham is but let's let's say it's it's maybe that um we can intercept that can't we we can fly a little uh, fly a bit of a yeah. rough and rough and ready glide slope there's no glide slope we can fly that in nav mode and we can pick the airplane out like a 10 mile final and uh and do that Just fly in vs can't we really yeah Okay, happy days. Obviously, all of the nav radio stuff in here uh, works as you'd expect. So let's say for a bit of uh, situational awareness, we want to put Gamston VOR on here. So I'm going to set it up one more two eight. In fact, brief break. There we go. I've just turned DLSS off. Uh, I, I don't think I really need the extra frame rate. I've got uh, plenty of frames as is. Um, this airplane definitely not particularly taxing on uh, on the old uh, GPU. He wanted to make it descent now, uh, get you down to about 2,000 feet, so yeah. uh, we have to select when they're down to 2,000. Okay, so I'll select 2,000. And if you go to descent on the uh, autopilot. Yeah, got it. I should run that nicely. Uh, if you want to keep uh, 300 pounds of fuel flow back on the power, yeah. that, should monitor, that should pretty much um, take control of the speed. And then leave it, leave it where it is. So you can see uh, out and arm. 
Uh, now we're in a heading as well. If you want to select a nav uh, on the autopilot, that yep. should be on nav. Sec. Let me align this properly. Uh, and give us a bit more of a sensible intercept because we are quite a long way off. Would it, would it actually would nav work from this far out? Yeah, so what it puts in heading heading mode. If you press nav, it should arm the nav. Then oh yeah, yeah, of nav. course. Yeah. Uh, right. So let's let's give it a go. Then let's hit nav. So that should keep heading on, which I think it has. Yeah, yeah. And then nav is basically armed. So it's armed at two thousand feet, but nav's two thousand feet again. So just bring the altitude because I think we're quite quite close into Nottingham. Just put the altitude down to a thousand feet and select a window. All right. Yep. And then we'll uh, do it like that. We are going a bit fast, so I'm going to pull the throttles back a little bit more. No such thing as too fast in the air. <laughs> Thousand to go. This thing's a beast. It does not hang around, does it? No, it's really quick. They, they, these things are about 28,000, 30,000 feet. Easy to get 300, 310 knots out of them, true. So, really good going, mate. Yeah, that's that's very impressive. That's not that much slower than a Dash 8. Obviously, a Dash 8 wouldn't be up at that altitude because uh, they're limited to 25,000 feet. Yeah. Not for performance reasons, um, it's actually to do with the, the passenger oxygen supply. But uh, that's a story for another day. So, if you want to reset 300 pounds of fuel flow okay. uh, on the and then go flap approach because we're quite close into nothing so we want to get configured out nice and early okay flap approach and then uh at this point uh we can see nothing on the right hand side here uh i'll go for gear down okay uh, let's I want to blow 180 sorry uh wait oh, for okay wait for sorry. 180. it will slow down it will slow down probably slows down a little bit uh slower than it was in real life yeah, it seems to be lacking a little bit of drag, doesn't it? A little bit of prop drag. Yeah. I've right. the gear down. There's one eighty gear we're down. We're a uh, full performance landing. I think it's prop forward now. That's right. A short run we're going to be it. No props forward. And then the uh, fuel condition levers to high idle. Okay, fuel condition to high idle. And that will give you max reverse basically uh, on landing. That's the idea behind that. Okay, what sort of approach speed do we want to be going for here? So, approach, so once, the, once we're uh, on the final approach, we'll go for once we're below 158 knots, we'll go for full flat. And with 300 pounds of fuel flow, uh, which you've got more than that at the moment, you want to bring the throttle back a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With 300 pounds of fuel flow, that will give you uh, about 130, 130 knots approach speed. And then slowing it down to a B ref of uh, 105 knots um, as, you cross, as you get closer to the waist. Right. Yeah, a little bit, little bit less power than that. About 293 on the pound of the fuel And hopefully that nav will start to catch soon because we're getting quite close. See the magenta line on the 750. And you see that uh, course bar coming in now. Yeah, on. so it should turn to intercept that as if we've. Uh, there we go, there she goes. So it's as if we've set up a little localizer here for ourselves. Very handy. Yeah. And now we'll go full flat. Okay, full flat. And it's indicating. And because we're quite low to the ground this approach, what we'll do, once you establish the final approach of the uh, you can turn your autopilot off and just fly your manual approach down for London. Sounds uh, terrifying, but good enough for me see the extremely right, right. tiny Nottingham Airport in the distance there. I think you, you'd really be pushing it with landing performance, wouldn't you, coming into Nottingham? So this is this is going to be yeah. exciting. Yeah, I think a two, 200 would be fine in Nottingham, but I think a 350 uh, privately you'd be able to get in, but commercially you will never see a 350 in Nottingham. It's a bit too big. That's not the wrong way. Uh, but you want that, that near B-Ref now. Do you want to add, add a bit more power? Yeah. Uh, 105. Uh, because we're not descending right now, so this, this power stand would work for the viewers uh, if you're descending on like an ILS. We're now effectively levelled off for now, uh, that's why the speed's dropping below 130. So, do trust that 300 pounds of fuel flow, it will work, I promise you. 
comment below and subscribe if you don't believe me. <laughs> right, okay, I can, I can see the runway quite clear ahead of you now. So, I think uh, Mr. Horse Pilot's done his job. I'm going to pop it out. Yep. And uh, I'll take over. This point, we're going to need to turn the fly direction up now, because, again, we're not following them. Yep, yeah, so FD, where the hell is it? I have no, no idea. Select heading. Deselect heading and out. Deselect heading and out. Oh, I've got enough. I should come off. That's the problem. It's not very well model. Which I don't want to take that. Turn alt off, maybe? No, can't get rid of it. Can't get rid of it. Shame. Hopefully, you can see the glorious 2 7 of uh, Nottingham Airport. Far away in the Always. distance there. There were some power lines to the left, uh, to 11 o'clock position here in, in real life. Coming over the little village of Cotgreave there. Just down there, you can see the new housing estate just slipping under the nose. I wonder if we'd get any noise complaints in real life if we flew one of these in there. Probably. I mean, well, if, that's you can, though, yeah. <laughs> if you can do it in a, if you can get noise complaints in a PA28, I'm sure this one would get a few. Yeah, definitely. So I'm having to use a lot of trim now. So as we were saying before, uh, what Nathan was saying about having to, to sort of almost flare it on the trim wheel, I'm having to add a lot of nose up trim. Well, we're not, I'm sorry, because yeah, we've not put landing lights or taxi lights on. So if there's land, I'm going to put landing and taxi in quickly. Oh, there we go. There we go, that's it. Uh, pretty much the final jet's complete. So there's gear, gear down, flaps down. Get rid of the yaw damper as well. I'm going to start bringing that power back now. You've got 500 feet just to give that VRF 105. And then before we go around, I'll just go. Um, basically, as you come down, go for the platform and then uh, power forward. You're ready to go in. And pray to the gods. Looking nice so far. Those trees are wild models on the bottom. Yeah. Right, I'm just going to idle it and pray. Okay, flaps, power. Oh, that was close. <laughs> I think it's quite a short runway for a gear. Oh, don't go crazy with the power. Right, positive climb gear. Right, dare we try a flapless approach in a King Air 350 at Nottingham? Give it a go. Uh, so, flapless, your speed. Uh, think of the speed in the settings here. Stand by. Uh, I'm going to go approach flaps, Nathan, for the for the circuit because that 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 feels right to me. Okay. Let's try and keep the speed under control a little bit. That's fine. Uh, but yeah, for flappers approach, go for approximately uh, 125 knots. That should be a nice uh, approach speed for that. Uh, okay. Uh, flapper. It's not actually speed listed on this uh, card. I'm just trying to think. Uh, because I've not got my jealous in front of me. I'm just trying to think the speed on top of my head. I'm pretty sure it's about 125 knots for uh, clean. Right. Clean one. Okay, so brakes, pressurised gear down below uh, 180. Uh, back, back to up again, I suppose. Okay. It's quite a quite a pitch change when you bring the flaps up. Uh, yeah, that's that's not really true to life. So it's, there's not a lot of lift to go along with the flap and more drag. So yeah, I've got much of a pitch change to be honest. Putting the flap down. Uh, it's not as noticeable as he's in the simulator right now. I am going to uh, wuss out and do the uh, extended circuit around the back of Cockgrave, not the uh, the standard light aircraft one where you go in very, very tight. I'm going to go out to the A46 here, stretch the circuit out oh, a little bit. I agree. <laughs> well, you know, when you get this aeroplane yourself, Nathan, you can fly whatever circuits you want, mate. That's the method. <laughs> Start uh, pulling the 
power back to start getting the speed back. Was it 125, Nathan? No, 125, yeah. For the yeah. And again, a bit like the, uh, we did in the Sesta Form Court, we similar thing where you kind of hold the attitude to the floor almost, uh, because that will give you a bit, pretty much a nose of, nose of attitude and power. Um, and you basically keep that all the way to touch down. It's quite similar to a Sesta Twin, to be honest. completely blind here, I'm just guessing where the runway is, that, uh, that pillar's in a brilliant position. Yeah, it, it's, it's, not, it's not that bad in real life, you can see, uh, if it is a uh, obstruction, but there you go. That was a fantastic <laughs> guess, there we go. <laughs> Very good. Alright, again, I'm kind of struggling to get the speed back, uh, I think it's, uh, I'm struggling with that sort of slippiness that uh, this model seems to have. It seems to just have a little bit too little drag. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm full idle now and we're, we're kind of maintaining 130. Nose much higher, much higher nose attitude with no flapping, so. Right, yeah. That's good. That looks about right. And pretty, pretty much I'm in the flare attitude now, so I'm not going to have to flare at all. I'm just going to fly it onto the runway. There we go, adding power. So everyone really runs that quickly, don't you? King oh in. yeah, big time. Jesus. Positive climb. Gear up. Right, we know all know what what comes next. The auto favors armed, so hopefully it should favor itself. Right, so I'm just gonna yank the condition lever for the which engine should we do? Critical engine? Yeah, why not? Right, here we go. Right. Left engine failure. Okay, so that's that's very manageable actually. Yeah, Not so you have got the rudder boost. If that's been modelled, uh, yeah. the rudder boost actually does help the rudder. So that's uh, really good. Uh, so, about 80 degrees on the, the attitude you, you're looking for. Okay. Should be, should be blue line. Uh, yeah, I'm a bit above blue line there, and I'm, yeah, I'm having to put most of uh, most of my pedal in there to keep the. Uh, keep the ball sort of, well, it's about halfway out actually, but I'm not 100% trusting of the Microsoft Flight Simulator turn coordinators in this kind of situation. I think they're a little bit a little bit dodgy. Uh, it does seem like we're uh, maintaining our heading, which is the ultimate uh, indication of whether the um, you're applying enough fuel. I'm going to use some uh, some rudder trim now to help me out. Uh, as I prop feathered, just look out of the window quickly. That should have feathered. Uh, it, well, no, it's it stopped spinning, but it's not in the feather position, is it? If, if I bring it Back to feathered on the. Any any look on there? No, no it's not in, not in feather. Look. Oh, it's not in feather. There we go. There we go. Oh shit! <laughs> Edit. So that's still spinning. There we go. It's now there feathered. There we go. So uh, again, that's not modeled correctly. That auto feather should have stopped that prop. Instantly. instantly, yeah. Um, was spinning. So in real life, you would have had a crash. Um, it's not. It'd be very, very hard, uh, especially like a new King of Pilot to control um, a non-auto feathered propeller. There's so much drag uh, on the on the other engine. Um, so that's not well modelled. Maybe we can look at changing that. And in terms it of performance, we've got a we've got a we've got plenty of performance now. We've got a feathered problem. We were going up at a thousand feet per minute here, so. The aeroplane yeah, so certainly seems uh, to be... Uh, I think the climb is about 620 feet, uh, it should be. Right. Um, but you probably get slightly greater than that. We're quite, quite light today, so that probably work uh, a little bit greater than that. I'm glad that's at max weight. Got to try and find my way back to, to the airport now. I'm halfway to East Midlands. <laughs> Probably the best place to go and end in failure. Yeah, to be fair, in real life, you you certainly wouldn't be returning to Nottingham in a King Air on one engine. You would uh, probably be going to the longest, straightest runway you could find that's got the, the best fire crew available. Absolutely. But hey, we're completely insane. So we've decided that despite our critical emergency, we're going to land at Nottingham anyway. Yeah, I heard of bacon in the cafe, so... Uh, <laughs> well, bacon. yeah... I've got a bacon sandwich with my name on it, so let's let's go. So, quite realistically, now the props feathered, the uh, the amount of yaw I'm having to provide to keep the ball in the middle is much less. Yeah, which is uh, correct.
So I've taken us up to 2,000 feet, which is obviously a little bit higher than uh, circuit height, but extra altitude and speed is, is usually a good thing in an asymmetric situation. So um, that's uh, making me feel a, a little bit more comfy. What's that old saying? Al altitude is, or speed is life, altitude is life insurance. That's absolutely it. Yeah. I mean, even even with the engine out, it's a it's a well-behaved aeroplane. Once you've got everything uh, sort of squared away, it's uh, behaving quite nicely. Are there any other kind of securing checks you do? Would you knock the generator off on the failed side or anything like that? Uh, yeah, you would do. Obviously, for this we won't. But yeah, you would. Okay. So you basically make sure it's fair, which it has. Uh, if it's not feathered, you would manually fair it as we have done. Uh, they're the sort of uh, the critical, really. And make yeah. sure climbing away from the ground, and then the securing drills would be. Um, leave the actually so on this aeroplane you actually leave the throttles uh, matched uh, on this aeroplane which is quite, oh, quite right. different okay. than normally but yeah. obviously once a fuel cut off done you leave a matched um, fly with match which, which is very different from uh, say most aeroplanes you fly uh, and then yeah you knock the generator off not, not one of the inverters off and that sort of thing but for this demonstration there's, there's no real point and in real life if I was this close to Nottingham I was going to land anyway I probably wouldn't bother because it's not hurting anything it's not on fire uh, as long as it's not on fire, I'm, I'm not worried about it. I'm going to just carry on as normal and, and land with a normal um, single engine approach check. Yep, makes sense. Right, I'm going to start pulling the power back and uh, coming down. So as you can see, as I pull the power back, there's quite a significant amount of uh, your change. Yeah. So n normally, well, normally what I'd be doing at this point is putting the gear down. But right now, I just put the uh, flap approach at the moment. Okay. Uh, having the gear down at 180. Uh, and actually, uh, it's a bit of debate in this at the moment, but generally, single landing the kicker, you'd land with, with a, uh, approach flap and, uh, and gear down. Right. Um, you can put the full flap in. Uh, I probably will at nothing, I'm just to put when it's in the middle uh, rather than on the approach. Yeah. So uh, we'll have it a bit later. Because it is a short run where you probably would land with. Uh, up here, but early normal airport, um, sort of Tom Castle, East Midlands, you just choose to land. Uh, with flat just realise I'm absolutely miles off the centre line. So, yeah, young. let's do a let's do a, a record scratch and uh, just do a do a left orbit and try and get the aeroplane back uh, in some sort of sensible position. I think I made that turn a little bit early, given that I had a thousand feet of extra. Height yeah. on there, but never mind. We should all expect a little bit of incompetence on every video. We throw those moments in for free. <laughs> we are not perfect. <laughs> exactly. We do not aspire to be perfect. <laughs> yeah. If if we were perfect, well, if I was perfect, I certainly wouldn't still be a flying instructor. Right, okay, so there's there's the runway. Let's fly fly a little bit of a bendy banana final approach. That should uh, do the trick. So I'm gonna, I'll keep the approach flapping because I'm quite happy with the uh, with the height. What sort of speed would you want to be going for, Nathan? Again, the normal approach speed is 130 knots. Okay. Uh, and then anti um, So bring it back to the rep now. Okay, close the runway and try and... Uh, I am going to take the approach flaps because it ain't slowing down. Yeah, take final flap, yeah, that's it. Yeah. And let's see if you can make it, you know. Oh Why my not? god, it looks way too high and way too fast. Single engine go around? <laughs> you can do if you want. I think it's going to be... Yeah, it's That's just floating. Around, Let's go! So flap immediately to... Uh, yeah. Gear up if you can. If you can. Yeah. Okay, let's get blue line. Let's test the multi-engine disruptor here. <laughs> so power up, gear up, flap up, pitch up. Get the trim in. Five to the live. Look at that. You, you get another circuit for free. I completely intended to do that. <laughs> I was so pleased it was but we wanted to show you more of it. <laughs> so 
So Back interestingly enough, uh, a single engine, uh, single engine go around is part of the uh, uh, multi-engine qualification course here in the UK. So we do practice those quite a lot in the uh, in the DA42. Yeah. And again, in the King of Tower region, you do practice a hell of a lot of them. Um, Could in the simulator, the instructor will be pulling the fire truck on the runway and make making you on fire and all these sort of uh, different emergencies and you do a hell of a lot of uh, single engine approaches and go around because uh, that's where you mess up the most as Kitty excellently demonstrated. Yeah, there. there we go. We do this for you guys. Yeah. Not just because we're bad. Right, there we go. It's somewhat unnerving seeing the prop just rotating slowly like that. I wish it would stop. Yeah, as if that, that in real life would, can rotate a few times, but very slowly. Generally, it would stop in flight. Um, but on the most part, you get a few rotations as it catches and winds and where generally that wouldn't be stopped. So that's a, a bad thing for this King Air so far, but overall, I think it's good. I've been getting quite a lot of bugs uh, since the last sim update with feathering props. I've, I've got a video coming out soon about re-reviewing some of the airplanes that we that we flew in the past and uh, I was struggling to feather a lot of them okay. um, so this might be my control setup because other other people weren't struggling with that so it may just be be me that the issue is here I may need to um, reassign some of my controls I've got a, a, a command on my Bravo which says feather prop when I pull it through a detent um, okay but it may be maybe not working And it might be interfering with the uh, with the actual Microsoft Flight Simulator feathering system. Because quite a lot of work's uh, been done on the on this particular aeroplane by Microsoft in terms of getting the uh, getting the feathering right. One of the abusers might get to find this. You can see the uh, uh, the radar counting down um, top right after one. The uh, was right. It's very nice. Posting is off if right out to that very clear And a normal normal to end of the process, I just think it's about bringing the power back. I was looking for 500 feet on the right out to start bringing the power back to the V rep, so for you guys to help you out at your point. I am going to use uh, full flap as well this time because I don't want to have a repeat performance. I'll probably bring the power up now, really, because uh, you're still quite fast. Yeah, the, the, the yeah. power is all the way to idle, mate. <laughs> okay. So, struggling a little bit again with getting it slowed down, but this is going on the floor, whether it likes it or not this time. Yeah, about you got one prop reverse available. We want, yeah, not. Right, not. Okay. Uh, we're having a little excursion across the grass. It's fine. Not big charge. You'll be fine. <laughs> I think maybe maybe going for the reverse on the one prop was a bad idea. <laughs> there we go. We're down. We're alive, just. Yeah. Oh, and I've not got an awful lot of steering either. No, you wouldn't be able to tax it very well on one engine. I wouldn't. Yep, we're, we're yeah. going in circles. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> right. Yeah, from a start, that's pretty accurate. If you kept it rolling, uh, you'd probably have made it, but once you stop, yeah, uh, there's, there's no chance. Right. Okay. Let's let's restart the left engine and get it back on stand, and we'll we'll rejoin the viewers once we're uh, once we're ready to give our conclusion. Right. After landing checks, let's go for it. Yeah. Fine. So auto uh off. Okay. Uh, off. Engine anti ice uh, back on, which we left it on for the whole flight. Oh no, we did, I don't. We did turn off. So yeah, back on. Enough. There we go. Uh, landing lights uh, off. Uh, strobe and records off. Windshield heat off. Uh, five hots off, so the fuel vents, uh, the pitos, and the stall. Okay, fuel vents, pitos, and the stall, yeah. Weather radar off. Nope, never turned it on, it's still on standby. Uh, transponder to ground. Pressurization should be zero, because we, we're pretty much set that anyway, so that's not a problem. 
Uh, flaps are flaps are up. Flaps coming up. Trim, trim reset to zero. Trim to zero. And then the next will be uh, park up and shut down checks. Lovely. Right. Uh, there's no space on the line because somebody's parked before and before that. There's uh, our two Red friends who we uh, yeah our two friends who are based in Nottingham who had one of those is obviously uh, taking up the. The space on the line. We'll, we'll, we'll not uh, begrudge that. Sometimes parked a bus on the line down here, so I'm sure Brian will have something to say about that. Nottingham, not well known for its buses. No. I think we can squeeze on the end here next to this uh, this tutor. Yeah, just about. Lovely aeroplane, the uh, the RAF tutor, first uh, first aircraft that I ever flew. Back when I was a, a little snotty air cadet, yeah, at RAF Church Fenton. I never flew the future, I tried, but it was, the weather was always poor. So I only flew the, uh, the Vigilant, the motor glider. Right, the yeah. No, they, the, the tutor is fantastic. If you ever, if you ever get a go in a, in a military one, they are brilliant. The, the civilian ones with the Tomahawk engine in suck. Noted. Okay, <laughs> so parking brake set. Okay, parking brake set. And now we'll just uh, shut down, so we'll go for avionics off. Avionics off. Inverters off. Inverters off. Uh, auto feather off. Auto feather off. Taxi light off. Taxi light off. And then go to the, uh, go to the right hand side, so turn the furnishings off. Yep. Yep. Always on. Um, the cabin lights can go off because it's daylight now. Uh, bleed air valves to uh, off. So there's just environmental off, so it's the middle position. That's fine. Cabin um, temp to uh, off from auto, the right hand side there. Yep, got it. And then the fuel condition levers uh, to uh, fuel cut off. And feather the props. So again, yeah, so I've, I've pulled the props into feather where they would be feathered on my uh, Bravo and they don't actually go into the feathering uh, position on here. So I don't know if that's kind of screwing up the the feathering on here because it did always work in the past. But anyway, we'll talk about that in a minute. There we go. So Take it down to the fuel figure as it, as it used more fuel on one side than the other. Let's have a look at the gauges. Let's have a look. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah definitely. Good. It definitely has. Uh, let's take the fuel figure and then uh, battery off. Okay, uh, pop the beacon off as well, I guess. And uh, yeah, gang bar to turn everything off. There we go. A cup of tea and a bacon sandwich for Kitty for a well <sighs> flight. And a, new, a change of shirt, right. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, okay, we'll be back in a second with our conclusion. Right, okay, so now it's time for us to come to our customary conclusion at the uh, very end of the flight. What do we think about this aeroplane? So I've had this for a little while. Um, Just Flight were nice enough to provide a pre-release copy, so we've been flying around and testing this a little bit. You may have watched our first look video when we took the aeroplane out with very little um, experience in it and just did a, a quick flight, and we were both quite impressed with it back then. Obviously, things are a little bit more polished now. There's a few things that have improved, a few more little tweaks to the flight model. So um, in terms of the uh, the final release version, the stuff that we, first of all, find positive on this aircraft. So the first thing I'm going to say is the visual quality and the lighting of the cockpit. Because let's face it, at the end of the day, what you're paying for is, is all in here. It's not outside. All that is default Microsoft. In here, it looks absolutely brilliant it is really really high quality um, you've got a lot of 4k textures and things like that so the look of the uh, of the interior is is spot on really and also you uh, you've got that fantastic lighting that we showed at the start of the video which I think looks really really atmospheric and, and absolutely brilliant you can see the uh, the gauges which have got really nice reflections on there and you can even see little marks of, of dirt on the glass of the gauges, which is stuff like that you know you, you see it all the time on, on older aeroplanes the the gauges get a little bit marked up and, and dirty over time so I think the the visual quality of the um, of the interior model is absolutely spot on and I mean let's face it the exterior is isn't shabby either uh, Microsoft certainly didn't mess around when they were making the um, the external models of their default aeroplanes. So it's certainly not a, a massive downside to still be using an exterior model. It's just that I suppose you aren't getting anything 
new and shiny for your money uh, in terms of looks. On the outside, all of the uh, the important stuff is happening on the inside. Yeah, I mean, it actually brings the cockpit sign as well, which we talked about briefly. So I think the cockpit sounds you get with the packs and so things like the, uh, the switches being pressed and the, the gear going up and down, that's really good. I think the electric wine with the gear going up and down is, is perfect and the flaps as well. Um, but because again, you're not paying for full airplane, some of the external uh, sounds like engines and a little bit too quiet for for my liking, and I think it obviously could be improved. But that's that's more Microsoft's job, not what you're paying for in this sim. So that is a bit of a shame. But overall, I think it's a I think it's a really good recovery of sound. Right. The next point that we both uh, thought was good was the performance accuracy of the airplane. So we did a few performance checks in terms of cruise speed, in terms of climb performance. Uh, and in those areas, it definitely seemed to match up with the real-world data that we have uh, available to us. Um, it seems to work um, very well at the at the speeds that it should work at. So your VY speeds and your single engine um, control speeds, VY SE and all the rest of it, all seem to work as they should in real life. Um, so that's always very nice to see. On this channel, we are very anal retentive about uh, the accuracy of, the, of these flight models. So absolutely the thing uh, the sort of thing we want to see uh, if we're pe spending money on an add-on basically so very very good to see um, also something else which uh, which seemed to marry up to the real life aircraft is the performance of the aircraft in the stall so the first stall that we did the clean stall very nice and gentle no power added no flap or gear it stalled very in a very sort of well behaved manner nice wings level no nose just kind of nodding down gently almost like a PA28 if you um, the sort of if you uh, do fly yourself you're probably familiar with that aircraft and just how benign it is. Um, then when we dirtied things up, added a bit of power and I kind of dragged it into the stall, it dropped the wing uh, and kind of went into that kind of almost incipient spin kind of situation, which, uh, as Nathan was saying, is uh, is pretty much what the real one will do. So, yeah, very impressive in, in terms of all that stuff. I know there's only a minimal amount of, of tweaking that Black Square's done in that uh, respect, but I think whatever they've done, they've done a good job of it. Absolutely. Uh, I think the system depth is good as well, something we've talked about. So all the switches work um, pretty much as they should. Uh, the circuit breakers are all pullable, and, and uh, that's a very nice little touch. Uh, the wipers, the lighting we've talked about, the switching and the dimming of each individual dim switch, I think that's really good and uh, and perfect for the sort of level of anal retentive we want uh, on this sort of simulator. So, uh, yeah, I think that's, I think the system depth is really good. And... Um, I can't, I can't be, I can't really say much more about that to us. Speaking of systems, obviously the airplane has an inbuilt failure system, which is something that I didn't realize was was as in depth as it actually is. It's very, very, very impressive. Uh, it's also got a wear system, so the aircraft will accumulate wear over time. You can even set the rate at which things fail and the rate at which things accumulate wear, which is really, really good. Uh, honestly, it's it's the kind of feature you expect to see on on your you know your fancy airliner add-ons and things like that now obviously there are other ga add-ons that feature that kind of stuff uh the two real uh class leaders at the moment in microsoft flight sim in my opinion that the uh, the milvis or blackbird or whatever they're calling themselves this week uh cessna 310 and the um fly simware cessna 414 i think those two airplanes are absolutely fantastic for the money that they are and they obviously have those sorts of things in built into them uh, however the um the this king air here with the, the system that it has here is uh is really really good for the price point that it's set at uh, you've also got um panel state saving as well so wherever you leave all of these switches when you shut the airplane down when you load back into it on the next flight they'll all be set where you left them so it really helps with that kind of immersion and, and almost like the role playing aspect of, of it being your airplane and everything set up where you left it so very very cool yeah, absolutely, and I think um, the radio options is really good. Um, so have that you can have the, the 750 with BMS, the 530, um, obviously, and that's all switchable with COM 1 and 2. You have the old old style King Air, um, obviously, basically, as it would have come out of the factory, probably most most models with the old, uh, just all the old radios with the KNS 80. And uh, as I mentioned before, like and subscribe and comment and. Uh, Kitty and I will help him because I'm not that horrible. We will work out how to use a KNS80 and we can show you that if that's something you wish to, to look at in the future. That is not a uh, a problem. Uh, but I do really like that um, part part of the um, of the system. And I think it's uh, I think it's really good. 
And then I'll just give Kitty to tell you what he thinks about the avionics. Uh, just my, my quick take for Kitty to talk about more of the avionics side of things. I would like to, this is a bit of a negative, I know we're doing more positive at the moment, but I would like to see uh, two little EFI screens on the um, uh, basically left and seat sides of the cockpit. That, along with a 750, uh, which is basically showing you the Collins Pro Line 2 would give you pretty much most King Ears uh, that are operated in, in the UK and Europe. Not all as fancy as some of the ones I fly with the Fusion Avionics, um, but the older Pro-Line EFI screens with a 750 or, or a GPS similar to that is what most King Ears are flying around with these days, so that would have been a nice touch, but um, unfortunately not. But the Avionics are really good, which is good to talk about now. Yeah, so Avionics and, and the instruments themselves, obviously this is a, a main part of this uh, this aeroplane. You've got, uh, obviously, the, the radio set, the default radios that come with the package, or you've got the option to integrate the 750. That's all very, very good indeed. You've got a, an autopilot, which um, is very, very functional. Uh, there are some little bits that maybe aren't 100% as they should be, uh, but for the most part, very, very functional. If you do want to fly this airplane on VATSIM, do long kind of IFR flights, things like that, you'll have no problems controlling it through the, uh, the autopilot panel here. Uh, so very, very good in that sense. All the instruments themselves, they look fantastic and they have all the functionality that they should have. Um, so that is is really good and, and really impressive to, to see. So really like uh, the look of all that kind of stuff. Obviously, the pressurization, the hydraulics, the electrics, all that kind of stuff is all modeled present and correct. Um, every little bit uh, is working as it should be. So really, really nice to see that. Absolutely. And we'll talk about uh, so we've got some negatives now. Um, so... One of the biggest negatives really to it is a default model, but you're not you're not paying for that, so it's quite a not a really fair negative, I suppose, for the, for the maker of this uh, of this uh, 350. Um, there's no external laminations for people who like to see sort of uh, like the, the boots firing, uh, the ice boots, uh, the doors, the flags, Peter covers, uh, the blanks and plugs, the passengers in and out of the King Air. So that's that's a definitely a downside, um, but. Is you are getting a default Microsoft Flight Simulator model, so that's why you haven't got that. But some people want to pay for that and want that, and that might not be there paying for them. But if you're happy with more of the, the flying and raw cockpit side of things, then that's not really a negative, I suppose. Absolutely, yeah. Um, one of the things that, that I would say um, certainly was annoying me a little bit on our review uh, review flight just now was the, the fact that the aeroplane seemed to be quite hard to slow down. Um, generally, with any aircraft that's got a prop, uh, propeller on it, be it piston or turboprop, uh, you close the throttles, the, the props will disc, as Nathan was describing earlier, and it gives you an, a load of, of uh, excess drag. The aeroplane will slow down really quite quickly. Now, maybe not quite as quickly as, uh, as the, the newer model King Airs, as Nathan was saying, but certainly it should be slowing down an awful lot when you chop the throttles back. Um, as it was, you know, we had gear and we had flap and throttles all the way on the, the stops idle uh, and the aeroplane really wasn't slowing down all that quickly. So that's a, a little bit more like the sort of handling you expect from a jet, certainly not from an aircraft that, uh, that propels itself around with uh, with propellers. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and just a few little things as well. We will look into it more in a future video when I get my hands on this and get, get my yoke back. I will look at things like auto feather and rudder boost checks and that sort of stuff. Didn't seem to bother one list on this flight and previous flights. We couldn't seem to get it working very well. Uh, and also the vacuum system as well. Uh, when we tested that, looking at when we fired the boots, yes, we're not going to get the external model because it's not by his default Microsoft Flight Simulator. But it would have been nice to get the vacuum system flick um, needle um, when we first press the boot switch. And also six seconds later, you get another little flick as the, uh, the tail boots fire. So. That we couldn't see animators. We'll have a look around and see if we can find any way of showing that to you in the future. But that's the sort of downside um, to it, really. Right. So all things considered, uh, I guess we should come to some sort of final conclusion. So my opinion overall is that essentially for the princely sum of £28, you are getting a an almost study level. I am, yeah, let's say it is a study level upgrade. Uh, to make the, the default Microsoft Flight Simulator King Air into something which is really very, very closely resembling the real-life aircraft. Uh, obviously, with the uh, the old-fashioned avionics in here as an added sort of bonus, you get to, to see what the, the older uh, avionics fit looks like and how to use the older avionics fit as opposed to the, the glass panel, which has really become the, the default Microsoft Flight Simulator thing, is to just have a bunch of Garmin screens in there and, and just call it a day. 
Um, so it is really good to see all these steam gauges in here and so lovingly modeled and all the rest of it. Um, I think for for what it is, it's really, really impressive. Um, and I I mean, I'm not, uh, I don't really know that much about the King Air. I, I flew on once many, many years ago uh, and I was just acting as a safety pilot. So I really didn't do that much actual flying of the aeroplane. Um, but from what I, I've uh, experienced with the real King Air, this uh, this is a great representation. It's a lot of fun to fly. It's genuinely genuinely pleasant to fly around. And you compare it to, I mean, it doesn't really have any direct rivals because all of it's, I mean, if you're going to compare it to uh, full aer aeroplanes, which have their own, you know, custom external models and all the rest of it, then it's a little bit unfair in that sense. It's obviously leagues ahead of the default aeroplanes. So if you are uh, a King Air fan and you uh, operate in Microsoft Flight Simulator, this is this is really a, a must-have for you. Um, I think that again, this is you know this literally released yesterday, so there's still plenty of room for improvement in here. I'm sure the the guys at Black Square are going to keep uh, keep adding stuff as it comes and as more functionality becomes available, and maybe they'll be able to do maybe a few external animations and things like that as time goes on. I don't know. I'm not sure, uh, but fingers crossed they will be able to bring more kind of stuff like that. And honestly, I think for for twenty eight pounds for for all of this stuff, it's it's really quite good value. Uh, would be my sort of final conclusion. Yeah, I completely agree with you, Kitu. Um I think an endorsement I can give is I would happily spend twenty eight pounds on it and fly it for fun, just obviously with with Kitty and and obviously my friends on flight sim, and also for me uh, going into um, a sort of LPC check or OPC check. Which is done in a simulator uh, often, or my company in the UK, that is done on a, on a, on a classic based King Air like this with the steam gauges. So for me, it would be really handy to use that type of autopilot and, and fly around with and just get myself familiar with procedural approaches we don't do all the time. Uh, definitely, I think it's worth the money if you're a King Air pilot and you want to do some um, sort of recurrent training and also just to have a fun with because it is a fun aeroplane to fly. It's fun to fly in real life and I think it's fun and reflected in a simulator. Brilliant. So that's our opinion. You may completely disagree with you, and I'm sure you'll put a load of hate in the comments um, <laughs> to represent that fact. However, uh, if you did enjoy the video, please consider giving it a like. Please consider subscribing to the channel for more uh, fun and games from myself and Nathan and Jimbo as well, when we can uh, when we can drag him on here too. And uh, I'm sure I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye bye.